Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell, keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem. Shalom, shalom, coin on peace be to you. When Messiah comes to take us home, may his praise be found. Shalom, shalom, Jerusalem. Hey, I prophesy peace to you. I prophesy peace to you. When Messiah comes to take us home, may his praise be found. In you, I speak to every storm in this place. Shalom, shalom, Jerusalem. Peace be to you. Now that Messiah is in this place. He's come to take it away. Let his praise be found in you. I'm prophesying to you. Shalom. Shalom. Koinonia. The bride of Christ. Peace be to you. Peace be to you. Let this be a place of peace. Let it be a place of power. Let it be a place of breakthrough. Let it be a place of intimacy.
bless his name you may not realize what has happened to you ambra do shaba koli amba fasi brandi kai zete ka parada balada bosa have come to the end of ourselves take over jehovah we have touched the end of ourselves take over now jehovah we have come to the end of ourselves hallelujah hallelujah We have come to the end of ourselves So take over Take over We have come to the end of ourselves Take over Take over We have come to the end of ourselves. Can you personalize it Take over Lord Take over I have come to the end of myself Take over Take over We have come to the end of myself Hallelujah Hallelujah We have come to the end of myself the voices sing it from your heart come on take over take over lord we have come to the end of ourselves take over when you come to the end take of yourself over. then you will see his glory come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah It's a powerful song of dedication. You will always rejoice when you come to the end of yourself. That's when flesh dies and you release the spirit. Hey, take over, yeah. Lord, we have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, take over. We have come to the end. about to share in this few minutes i pray from my heart that it will change you and set you on fire i pray that it will change you i pray that it will change you and do something remarkable in your life hallelujah praise the lord let's get to the word of god bless you it's good to have everyone around Make sure you have something to write. Presence of God is mighty in this place. Say pakata banana bosh. Hallelujah. I want to teach on something very powerful. I want to share with you a very big secret tonight. 
and for as many who will consider it to be valuable I pray that many years from now it will make you a sign and a wonder because I am aware by now that not everybody is really interested in the things of the spirit just leave her alone hallelujah there will be a lot of impartations tonight because of what I'm about to teach hallelujah I want you to be sensitive open your eyes will you open your ears and then you'll understand that his presence is here open your eyes if you open your ears then you'll understand Hallelujah. I want to teach tonight on the price for an extraordinary anointing. Never, never trivialize what you are about to hear. I, I'm here to preach my heart to you tonight. And I pray that somebody will take this seriously. May this message set somebody on fire. May this message answer the question somebody's heart the price for an extraordinary anointing hmm. hallelujah I've always wondered why certain people in this life seemed to be unusually extraordinary hallelujah why certain sportsmen were better than others why certain musicians and artists were better than others why certain preachers men and women of God what brought the power and the anointing of the spirit so mightily upon their lives when you read through church history you will see an archive of men that walked like gods upon the earth now there were others who did nice great things little thing here and there but there were others who were too extraordinary to be neglected they shook cities single-handedly there was there was such a degree of the demonstration of the Holy Spirit upon their lives. Hallelujah. And I made up my mind years ago that my life was not going to be extraordinary. My life was not going to be normal. Sorry. I made up my mind years ago that I was going to live an extremely extraordinary life. Hallelujah. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if you have done these things with the people that have gone ahead of us, and yet you say there is a generation that will do more, I want to be that generation. Every time I picked up my Bible and I read the things that the Word of God said would happen, He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he also do and greater works. And I carried my Bible and said, Lord, do you really mean this? Hallelujah. And I began to study the life of extraordinary people. I have spent a major part of my life studying extraordinary people in every area of life. Every area. Finance, ministry, leadership. What made them so extraordinary? Because I don't want to be a mediocre. Jesus was born in a manger. But when he was leaving heaven, there was a crowd to celebrate his departure. And I'm very disturbed, and I must say this, at the complacency that is upon especially preachers in the body of Christ 
there is a very low standard that many men and women of God, especially around this country, have set for themselves. There is no pressure to go the extra mile and do amazing things for the kingdom. Hallelujah. When I listen to certain preachers, the presence of God that came out of their lives were amazing. It was compelling. You could not deny that these people knew the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Very, very powerful. And one time I listened to William Branham. When I listened to his message, I was shaking. And the Holy Spirit told me, Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. What kind of anointing did men like Elisha carry that although they were dead, a dead body meandered that place and suddenly jacked up. Are there such people in the earth today? Are you listening to me? Am I challenging somebody? For desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing in. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing on. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. Help me sing. There's gotta be more than this. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. Cause I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. Listen, there's got to be more than what we're watching on our television. Are you listening to me? There's got to be more than what we celebrate as ministry and power today. There's got to be more. This cannot be all of God. Certain people have become examples to let us know that there are possibilities that are obtained in God. It's just that the standard is high. The Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He lives in a hill and whoever will climb there will access some things. He said, he shall receive a reward from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. I studied Ezekiel 47 and it challenged me. The Bible says, out of the east side of the temple, a river came out. And he said, an angel measured a thousand cubits. And it was to my ankles. That's a level. That's a measure of the anointing. But he didn't stop there. He said he measured another thousand cubits. And then it was to my knees. And the man would have chosen to stop there. But he said, I will go for more. And he measured a thousand cubits. And it was to his loins. And he said, although this is great, by now you are a celebrity, you are on every television, but he said there is still more. And the Bible says he measured a thousand cubits and it was a river, a, an overflowing river. And the Bible says wherever that river went, the fish that was dead would come alive. Hallelujah. My anthem every time is that there is more. There is more. If you're a lukewarm person who does not have any pressure to press, you won't be my friend. You won't like me. My life will offend you. The price for an extraordinary anointing. I made certain vows with my life that I was going to leave a mark upon this earth before I go to be with the Lord or He comes to find me working. I made up my mind that I was not just going to be that preacher with a nice congregation and just having people and join the rat race of preachers fighting themselves and doing things as if the anointing has finished. Quarreling and writing things about them. No! That kind of life is for people who have refused to press higher. 
Hallelujah. See, let me tell you something. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's energy. The anointing is God's ability to do work. Just like in physics, we define energy or we define power as the ability to do work per time. That's the definition of the anointing. The power of the Holy Ghost. Resident in a man that causes the man to produce extraordinary results. The Bible says in Isaiah 20, 10, 27, it says, It shall come to pass in that day. Which day? The day you are interested enough to enter that dimension with the Spirit. That the burden shall be lifted from off thy neck and the yoke from thy shoulder. And it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. There are many preachers that go into ministry without the anointing. Many people trying to work for God. Many people trying to be great without the anointing. You have no ministry without the anointing. The anointing of the spirit is God's agency. His ability that can be resident in a man. Causing that man to do extraordinary things. And if that ability is not in you. You cannot pretend it's there when it's not there. Because it speaks. Hallelujah. Every time I watch television. I get blessed, but I get disturbed in my spirit. When I see the satisfaction that is upon men of God as they preach, in my mind I'm saying, is this, was this the whole vision that they saw when they began with God? If no, what happened on the way? And then one time the Lord began to speak to me about the extraordinary anointing. And the Lord told me something that shocked me. He said, son, it is not up to me. It is entirely up to you to determine how far you want to go in the anointing. Many people think it's just God. He brings it whenever he wants. And if God likes you, he will just give it to you. If anybody has preached that to you, I'm telling you right now, right now, that is not true. Psalms 89 says, I have found my servant David. He had to make himself available. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. Hallelujah. Every time we watch extraordinary people during the Olympic, the attention of the whole world were on a few who did extraordinary things. Their age, their gender, their race, their background, notwithstanding. The world has always stood in honor of extraordinary people. Ordinary people have not done anything to the world. When they give people Nobel Prize, it's because they did extraordinary things. Hallelujah. And I want to challenge you tonight that there is a dimension in God that you can press into and you will access not just an anointing, an extraordinary anointing. There are many people who claim to be prophets in this country and you see that they, they are really called but they have not contended to those dimensions in God. They are prophets who look like pastors or deacons. No pressure to contend for the deep things of the spirit. I was studying the gospels and I started crying. You know why I cried? Because in Bible times, all people needed to do was to locate Jesus Christ or any environment where he was around. Whether or not they would be healed was not the issue. They knew that once they saw Jesus Christ, that was it. Powerful dimension of grace. At what level in the church will people say, all I need to do, take me to that place. When I get there, I will find God. When I get there, no matter what the problem is, there must be a solution. Right now, to get to a place where a man of God is, is only the first question answered. The second question is to hope. Hope that at least God will attend to me. And every time this is my cry, I say, Lord, don't send me if I'm going to be an ordinary person. Hallelujah. Someone spoke to me one day and said, Josh, I think you need to go on air. I said, me? I will never go on air until I have a message for the body of Christ. Are you hearing me? 
I'm not going to go on air and have somebody scroll my channel and say, wow, he's a nice man of God next. No, no, no. There's got to be something extraordinary. This is what I, I made up my mind that we'll never officially begin to record Koinonia messages until there was something that was substantial enough for the body of Christ to have. There are many people writing books and tapes that are empty. They have no power and no ability. They are just psychological jargons. No power to change people. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Bible says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says that he had the spirit without measure. And he went about doing good. And healing all day that were oppressed of the devil. Acts 10 38. I made up my mind that I was going to explore. See, can I tell you the truth? As far as I'm concerned, I've not started ministry yet. I feel very sad when I see a lot of people. They don't say I've been five years in ministry, seven years. I tell them, keep quiet. What is ministry? Ministry is representing God, being an ambassador. How much? What have you done? What mark have you made? When I begin ministry, the world will know. The Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Many people just get up, they start churches, they gather people, they have no message, they have no nothing. What do you have that has not been heard before? The Bible says there is a path which no fowl knoweth. And a path which the feet of the lion has not trodden. Many men of God, what is happening in this country is just a repetition, copy and paste of spiritual things. There is no new. But the Bible says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. See, behold, I do a new thing. Hallelujah. Nelson Mandela became sick and he kept the world at a standstill. Christians, non-Christian, and everybody was praying. When Obama came, he had to go and visit him. Listen, this is, this is amazing. What made him an extraordinary leader? My, my first challenge for you tonight is that you must refuse to be ordinary in life. I want to challenge you. You must refuse. It's a determination. It's a decision. I refuse to be extraordinary. Call it pride. I don't care. Hallelujah. There is a level where you can get hold of an extraordinary anointing. It will produce an extraordinary ministry. It will produce an extraordinary life. Kenneth Hagin of blessed memory. A man who lived an extraordinary life. He had such a, a mighty anointing upon him. William Branham, I watched the video of Jaco, and they brought a lady who had cancer. Are you following me now? It was, it was a growth. It was swollen. I watched it. It's not like they told me. This guy held it and peeled it away. He was even sitting on a chair. He held it, peeled the cancer away. No blood. He was showing people. What is our boasting? What is our bragging for? I made up my mind I will never officially celebrate my birthday until I have a reason to celebrate. Birthdays is not a celebration of the day you were born. It was a celebration of, for what you are doing, what you were called to do, what you are living for. Are you listening to me? When I watch the videos of these people, I, I get broken. Mighty men! William Branham would move and because of the degree of anointing that was upon him, a hollow will move together with him. Ketun Kuman was so full of the Holy Ghost. She carried the anointing to a point that one time on stage she had crossed the stage yet she was still floating. She didn't even realize it. Who through faith subdued kingdoms? Who are these men? Who are this strange breed of people that defied the ordinary status quo of their days and told themselves they were going to press. 
The difference between extraordinary, listen to me please. The difference between extraordinary and ordinary is that word, extra. Hallelujah. Every time I want to counsel people, I just say, Lord, are these people going to gather and I'll just waste their time? Or will they really receive something? Can I tell you something? The body of Christ is so frustrated. Many people are frustrated because preachers make a lot of mouth about things they have no anointing to defend. Hallelujah. A lot of preachers come and we brag and we make all kinds of noise. Oh, if God doesn't heal you, you don't have faith. Blah, 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 blah. And now the sick people come and they go back. And then they run to herbalists. And we have, we carry our big mouths and we criticize them. When the herbalist in a village is doing what a preacher has refused to do. And people are desperate for help, they will do anything including leaving your church or your ministry and they'll find solutions are you listening to me jesus climbed the mountain a crowd followed him there jesus went to the wilderness a crowd followed him there he was in a room the bible says a whole city came and filled there men who knew that they were going to get substance there is a lot of wastage happening in the body of christ men and women of god just joking around and playing around and the the circumference of all what we call anointing the moment a man of god's dream is to get to the point where you can touch somebody or blow air and somebody falls it's enough demonstration to people that you are anointed people fall down get up and clean themselves nothing changes hallelujah there are certain meetings in my life I entered some of those meetings just once, but I will never forget. Hallelujah. Never forget. T.L. Osborne entered only one meeting. One meeting of William Branham. Just one. And it set him on fire forever. Just one. I told God, I said, Lord, the deadline for transformation in any life in Koinonia is two meetings. Two meetings. Every time I pray, I said, Lord, let it not be that somebody will come for koinonia at least twice and not be changed and you ask the person how was service say wow it was nice but that somebody will come and at the end of it he cannot even talk the person is just on his way going and you're saying what happened he said i can't i can't begin to describe the impartation i don't know if it was impartation i got or revelation i got i don't know i know that i got something you'll be like a snake that swallowed something else it can't move until after some days where you know that god is in this place there are people seated here who are sick there are people who are oppressed And we men of God feel it's not an issue. And, and you know, shame on we preachers to an extent that whenever you see people being delivered and free, men of God begin to get angry and criticize. This is how much we are not even interested in the agenda of God. Someone gets free, someone gets delivered. See, let me tell you something. I made up my mind. The Bible says, he who walks with the wise shall be what? He who walks with the great shall be what? He who walks with the extraordinary shall be what? I love everybody, but I will not follow everybody. I am determined to make sure that a lot will be done for the kingdom of God in my lifetime. This is why there is no satisfaction. I've had one or two awards that were given to me. You will never find them on my table. Those things are deceitful. Very deceitful. Award that a few people just came together and said, take, you did this and that. 
you now place it and you are smiling and it's lying to you. See, when I was in secondary school, it was in a local government where, you know, many people were not even serious with their studies. So we're the best, we're the best school in that local government. What we call local champion. If we came for debate in your school, just start crying by that standard. Hallelujah. Until we made up our minds one day to visit a school that was used to competing with people going state by state. That day, they showed us that the ceiling of somebody else can be the foundation of the next building. Hallelujah. When I came back, listen, when I came back from that debate, I was ashamed of myself. I ran to the state library. I had been the best student in my class until I tried writing jam mats. After five hours, I got four. Four. One, two, three, four. I checked the back of jam brochure. And they said there were certain people that got 300 and something. I said, Joshua Selma, you are joking. Many of us have lived in circles that have lied to us too much. We think the whole world is like our little community. Hallelujah. That's how many men of God are. They, they have surrounded themselves by, with psychophants and liars who make them feel they have every anointing in the world. Then one day you go and try something that you don't have grace for and you receive a root shock. Then you begin to say it's not true. This thing didn't work for me. Anybody that is doing it is not of God. This is fake. Shut up. That you are lazy and you are not pressing does not mean everybody has refused to press. There are people who will not stop. Are you listening to me? The price for an extraordinary anointing. There can be more than what you have seen. There can be more. There can be more. Many of us stopped pursuing God the day somebody fell down under the anointing. You don't know whether it was you or it was the person's prayer. You just know it happened around you. From that day, you were convinced Whenever you go for meetings and they are ministering to people, you are waiting for them to say, ministers, come and lay hands. They say, ministers, you get up. What do you have? What do you have? How many? How many of it? He said, listen. He said, what do you have in your house? He said, I won't lie. I have something, but it's little. Sometimes you need to accept that you have, but what you have is not enough. The woman said, I have oil, but it's in a small cruise. The prophet said, all right. Let me show you something that can expand the oil for you. She never would have believed that there can be more. Hallelujah. I get very, very, I get very disturbed when I see people go for meetings. And to worsen the case, you want to see the disorganization of men of God wait until the anointing begins to break out in a meeting. Every man of God's body is itching him. Everybody wants to hold the mic. God has not finished or just wait. There, there, are, there are some people there at the back, at the back. All these, all these things we are doing. For 10 minutes you are talking. You are just, it's like starting a generator. Go and sit down. There are certain people, Catherine Kuman, before she got to the venue of the meeting, kilometers away, people started falling under the anointing. This is how they knew Catherine Kuman was coming. One time she finished the meeting. And they were pressing her and they had to follow her through a kitchen door. The moment they opened the door, all the chefs, all of them were under the anointing until she passed. She was not praying. This was her default state. Hallelujah. Am I challenging you tonight? Sometimes when people call me to come and minister, as soon as I finish the ministration, I don't even want to hear any comments because I have to run. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I've left Nigeria. I will not be fooled. The future of ENI is in that letter I, international. If you think what we have now is enough to feed the world, go and sit down. How many of you have seen people produce poster? And when you are seeing it on the laptop, you think that's the best poster you have produced. It's when you print it out and paste it, you will see that it's as ordinary as the ones around.
I refuse to be ordinary. There is a realm in God. Listen, can I tell you, when you hit that realm, you will start resting. You have entered the Sabbath of greatness. You will rest. Until you get to the seventh day, do not rest. I'm going to share with you four keys. Number one, This is not what I'm just preaching. These are keys that I've made up my mind that they'll be part of my life. Can I tell you something? Look at me. God is challenging some of you tonight. Some of you have not backslided, but you have, not, you have stopped growing. You've not backslided, but you are, there are many preachers in Nigeria that have stopped growing. They've not gone back, but they are in the same realm for a long time. It's just because where they have gotten to is, is substantially great. And it has been able to achieve one or two things. May your life produce a wonder that the world has not seen. May your life be the vehicle that God will reveal the more part of him that many people have not seen. Number one. You want to have an extraordinary anointing. The first price to pay is the price of consecration. The price of consecration. I will run very fast. Joshua 3 verse 5. The price of consecration. You don't hear this message is preached in church. Many people don't care. When I talk of consecration, I'm not just talking about run away from ladies. No, no, no. That's not even what I'm talking about. Consecration. To consecrate means to set apart. Consecration requires absolute surrender. Joshua 3 verse 5. Joshua 3 verse 5. If you want the Lord to do mighty things through your life, can we read it? One to read. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. If you do that, what will happen? Tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. You want to see wonders in your life? The first key is the price of consecration. Consecration requires absolute surrender. Everybody say absolute surrender. You will never have the extraordinary anointing when you have your own agenda. You just want to use God's anointing to do your own agenda. Uh -uh. When God calls you, his first assignment is to kill you. You die to yourself, to your ambitions. Listen, you do not know the degree of surrender that brings authentic power and anointing. How many of you remember that gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim? Some of you will remember him. He was right here in Koinonia. This guy wanted to be, he was in a group called Highlanders in Port Harcourt. Very serious occultic group. And he wanted the power of invincibility. He wanted to be able to do great things. When he met the Habalist, the Habalist told him, you have to consecrate yourself. For three days and three nights, he was lying down in a graveyard. His eyes did not see any man. I'm telling you how the devil gives people power. Three days, he said in the night, he will see people come out of graves and move. And you were not supposed to shift. They will touch him. He said, many of you do not know that the anointing comes with a price. That's why you see, when you talk against a man who is truly anointed, whether you are right or wrong, God will punish you. Are you listening to me? Absolute surrender. Consecration requires enduring the pain of being different. Oh, it's painful to be different. Let me tell you. It's painful to ride a different, a different plane of life. When everybody is going this way. When this is their definition of success. Moses was in the backside for 40 years. When his age mates were ruling in Egypt, 
He left the luxury of Egypt to prepare for an extraordinary ministry. 40 years. At the end of it, he came back to Egypt. He said, I'm ready. Oh, you can know you are ready. And it will not be pride. You can know you are ready. There is a time called the season of appearance. Are you, are you listening to me? Years ago, I hope I'll be able to share a few stories today about myself. Years ago, when I started preparing, when the Lord showed me the visions of the extraordinary things I'll be doing, in my mind I said, Lord, will people believe these things? And then the Lord began, sometimes the Lord will hold me in a room. Three days have not come out. My eyes have not seen the light. Three days. I would stay there just praying. Sometimes sleeping, I would wake up and I would lie down. And a mist, like a cloud, will literally come into the room by the shape of a man. A real mist, I'm not talking of some metaphysics hallucination. If you are seeing it, you are seeing it. If it's like it is not there, you are either seeing it. This is Sam. This is music director. Hallelujah. I had very strange experiences. And I knew that this was a preparation for an extraordinary ministry. Many of you, this is what has been happening to you. Hallelujah. But nobody has told you. They've not encouraged you to know. Are you, are you listening to me? Many of you, you don't even know. And you are not serious because you started joining people. You now want to run and go and start a church or a fellowship. You've not even done anything. Ella, you'll be my secretary. Matilda, you'll be the PA. You are the one who will buff me. You are the one who will dress me. You will be going to the restaurant for me. Say, God gave me a commission. He said, now my son, arise and raise me a generation. Sit down. He said, arise from his perspective. See, let me tell you something about the word of God. God speaks from the realm of eternity. Everybody say eternity. He speaks from the realm of eternity. There is no time. So when the word comes to you, it comes with such a strong urgency, you think you should get up and go immediately. You must sit down and find the time component of every prophecy. That's why when prophets heard from God, they said, according to the time of life. Are, are you following me? Thank you, Jesus. It's painful to stand out. Listen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's painful to stand out. It's painful to be unusual. It's painful to be controversial. If you are not ready, forget about an extraordinary anointing. These are strange and rare people. That's why many people cannot make it to that list. They are too conscious of themselves. You must die to yourself to carry an extraordinary anointing. They will talk about you. They, we are speaking about Satan and Jesus at the same time. Two extremes. No matter, you will have to be in between two of them. Different in your life. Different in your mindset. There are ways they do things in your house. Now you make up your mind and say, no way. These sacrifices and this idolatry and the rest count me out. This is not going to be part of my life. I'm preparing for an extraordinary life. And people look at you. Say, so this thing has been there for how many years? Until the reward comes, you will look foolish. So let it not be strange to you. Shabalata katabra. When you get to this realm, you will die to yourself. Literally. Everybody say the price of consecration. Many people do not like this. You know what? See, one of the biggest problems with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, especially the American church, and now it's coming into Nigeria, we love comfort too much. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit is called the comforter. But listen, I need you to know that any sensible man knows that you don't get comfort from day one. When they give birth to a child, the first thing he receives is a slap. That's a sign to show that he's alive. Are you hearing me? Many people want pampering. 
We have built churches that want pampering. You say something that is striking. People say, we don't like this kind of preaching. No? We'll stop sowing into this ministry. And the man of God said, alright, we'll, we'll, we'll think of how to, to arrange it. May Koinonia never become the place that will water down truth because we are looking for money. Hallelujah. Everybody say the price of consecration. Before David was anointed, Psalm 89 said, I have found. Do you know what it means for God to find a man? The psalmist said, where can we hide from your presence? Yet God is saying, finally I have found you. Because many people just want comfort. We want to use the anointing of God to accomplish our own agenda. And so the first thing is you must die to yourself and die to your agenda. I was listening to Benny Hinn. He was talking to some youths. And he was telling them, he said, look, you people do not know the price that brought this level of anointing to my life. He said, I don't know the, name of, the names of footballers. I don't know the names of music artists. He said one time his son asked him to take him to a basketball place. He said when he got there and he saw people jumping, he could not understand what they were enjoying. The anointing will change you. It will make you strange. People say you didn't used to be like this. Where has your social life gone to? What happened? You will find it in the future. Give it up now. There are pastors who do visitation from Sunday to Sunday. Even Sunday morning, they quickly visit a rich man's house before they run to church. And then they believe that they are going to get an extraordinary ministry. And then many people now want methods. Young Cho went to preach somewhere. He pastors one of the largest churches in the world. Hallelujah. And many Americans just sat out with their notepad. They believe he was going to give them 31 guaranteed methods. You know, this is what we like now. Do this. Add A to B to C. This will happen. Young Cho came up. He doesn't speak English too well. Paraphrase him. He said, you people don't pray. You are not serious. You just sit down. You want the anointing. And he went and sat down. That was the end of his message. It was a prophetic rebuke. Authentic prophetic Bible type prophetic rebuke. Hallelujah. That was the message. He who had an ear in that meeting should hear. And go back to the secret place. We like methods. Right now we read all kinds of psychological books. Unbelievers are writing books to govern church ministry. How to attract a crowd. 20 quick ways. Guaranteed. And many gullible men of God who are lazy. Just get up. You see them watching CDs. You would think it's something that will provoke them. A motivational speaker sits down. He says, when you come, start with a story. When you start with a story, use an example. When you do that, do this and that. You tried it, it didn't work because you are in Nigeria. Everybody say it. Nigeria. Nigerians have not been trained to tolerate nonsense. We are coming out from witchcraft straight. We are looking for something authentic. You don't come and tell people these jargons and junks. They will manage it for two days. They will laugh. We'll, we'll, when it gets bad, they will call you and say, Pastor, I sow the seed. I prayed. It's not working. If you don't respond to me by next week, you will see me in your church again. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Listen. Every great man knows that you must give up something to go up. Did you hear what I'm saying? You must give up something to go up. Politicians know this. By 1 a.m., you are sleeping. A politician is in a herbalist house just to get little political office. What has made the body of Christ so lazy? I believe in seed faith. But let me tell you the truth. If you want an extraordinary life, it's beyond money. Are you listening to me? It's even beyond impartation. A time will come you must dig your own well. Your customized dealing with the spirit. When you get it, you will know those who are having what is not it. If you are the best student in your class and you see the dullest student getting 99, you know something happened. 
Because you know what you are doing that makes you the best. Hallelujah. Many believers cannot detect error because they themselves have not entered the substance. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Revelations 18 verse 4. Revelations 18 verse 4. Powerful statement. He said, come out of her, my people, that you will not partake of her sins, that her plague will not come upon you. The Lord is speaking to his bride. He said, come out of her, my people. Come out of that status quo. Hallelujah. And I heard a voice, another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye not receive her plagues. Everybody say, I'm coming out. Refuse it. Refuse it. You want to be a man of God? You better, some of you are attracted at the vanities. You, you spend day and night browsing church structures. You believe that is how to be in ministry. Hallelujah. Browsing church structures. And then you finish, you say, this is the car. And you gum it in your room and keep speaking it. The car that will carry me. Look, let me tell you something. Faith is not foolishness. Sit down and pay the price and tell the Lord, search my heart. There are tendencies. I don't know how it will be the day I see 500 members who are loyal to you and can open up their spirit. The price of consecration. You cannot want to live like any other person. I say it with all humility. You will not find me around just gallivanting around. You say, what are you doing? Say, today is a happy day. I just feel like strolling. I'm at the season of my life where I am still at the preparation stage for an extraordinary life. The moment I finish preaching in Koinonia, I run back and lectures continue. I'm in the school of the spirit. No amount of manifestation will stop it. When I go home, I just get on my knees and I say, Lord, I thank you for what you did. I thank you for the mighty things that happened. And the Lord says, let's continue. Well done, but let's continue. The journey is still far. Everybody say, I choose to sanctify myself. Say it, I choose to sanctify myself. There are many things that take our attention in the body of Christ. Computer games. Some of you is movies. You can watch movie from morning. You only stop to eat lunch. Immediately you finish. Which part? Which part? Did I watch that guy? Has, has a lady finally told him yes? Which part? You just come and sit down. The food will burn there. Later I say, off it for me, please. And they ask you, say, what do you want to become? He say, like Benny Hinn. Huh? Hallelujah. An extraordinary life. Listen, let me tell you. You must prepare for an extraordinary life. That's why oftentimes God will separate people away. He took Moses in the wilderness. He was alone. The price of consecration. Second Timothy 2. The last scripture. Let's run. Verse 19 to 21. The Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The next verse says, But in a great house, there are not only vessels, listen, not only vessels of gold and silver, but vessels of wood and clay, or some versions say earth. It says, Some are unto honor. That means it's your choice. There are vessels in a great house, but not every vessel is unto honor. He says, Some are unto honor, and some are unto what? Dishonor. Here's the condition. He says, If a man will purge, separate, consecrate, sanctify himself, he said, That man will be a vessel unto honor, meet, fit, prepared, equipped for the master's use. Say, I'm a vessel unto honor. The price of consecration. The price of consecration. 
there are many of you, every time you hear the word price, you don't like it. Let's drink ice cream. Hallelujah. Do you have money? No, 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 no. Don't mention it. We, we hate anything that has to do with price. The Bible says, Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. It says, I reckon, I come to terms with this fact that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. That's what the Bible says. I reckon that the sufferings, that means there are temporary setbacks. The sufferings of this present time. What time? The time of your preparation. It's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. Verse 19 says, For the endless expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Number two, the price of revelation and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You want an extraordinary anointing? This is the second price. The price of revelation. The price of revelation and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You will never be able to live an extraordinary life. You can never have an extraordinary ministry. If you do not know the person of the Holy Spirit and you do not have revelation. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 to 19. Paul began to pray and say for this cause. I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom. And revelation in the knowledge of him. 18 says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know enlightenment. You want to be great in life, you must go for knowledge. You must go for knowledge. You must go for knowledge. Are you hearing me? You must go for knowledge. You can't be great in ignorance. No. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, it says, My people perish for lack of knowledge satan is only as powerful as our ignorance will allow him success is very predictable when you understand the laws that govern it knowledge many of us don't go for revelation you don't contend you must become a student of the bible if you want an extraordinary anointing are you listening to me you must become a student not just a recipient many of us want things from god but we are not serious with the word of god how amiable are your word oh lord they are my meditation all day long i'm obsessed with the word of god i think the word of god my conversations are governed after the word and i'm not just doing it to preach if you are just preparing sermons people will know you can't pretend it forever he said thy word oh god have i hidden in my heart this is how you prepare for an extraordinary life. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. You want an extraordinary life? Get back to the Bible. Go and sit down. Beyond morning devotion. My son, pay attention to my words. Proverbs 4. Incline your ears to my sayings. The Bible says, Do not let them depart from out of thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said they are life to those who find them. That means not everybody is interested. But they are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Hebrews 11 from verse 1. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He said for by it the elders obtained a good report. The Bible says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. The price of revelation. People who are extraordinarily anointed are men of the word. When you see a man who is anointed, when I talk of the word, I'm not talking of quoting the word. You will know they submit to the governing authority of the word. Being a student of the word is not just about talking it. There is a way you, you submit. Like you submit to a man. You have submitted to the authority of the word. 
Many of us read the word, but we have not submitted. To submit to the word of God means the word of God becomes the final opinion in your life. No matter what your argument is, when they bring the word of God, it ends every contention. John 5, 7. Jesus speaking. He says, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. Very important. His word must abide in you. Hallelujah. He says, you will bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Hallelujah. John 16 verse 13. Let's look at, I'm just giving you these scriptures. John 16 verse 13. Can you look at it very quickly? John 16. God is changing somebody tonight. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come. Listen, let me tell you something. Koinonia is called intimacy and partnership. The first thing is intimacy. You must contend for the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. It is in the knowledge of the Holy Spirit that you experience the gifts of the Spirit in your life. You cannot have the gifts of the Spirit and the anointing of the Holy Spirit independent of His presence. When He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into how many? That means there are many truths. He will guide you into all of them. It says, For He shall not speak of Himself, but who whosoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you he will show you hallelujah very important let me show you something jesus said john 14 verse 10 john 14 verse 10 the second prize the second key to an extraordinary anointing i just have four of them john 14 verse 10 Believest thou not that I am in the Father? Now, this was Jesus doing extraordinary works. And these people were dumbfounded. And they wanted the secret of his power. Listen to what he was saying. He says, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you. He said, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. The Holy Ghost. That source and sustainer that lives in me. He said, he doeth the works. Every time you see a mighty man doing things, he's not the one doing it. There is somebody behind. I was not born like this. I wasn't born this way. That's my sister. My blood sister. I wasn't born this way. It takes a commitment and a determination. Go for revelation. It's too early to start looking for manifestation. You are at the stage of preparation. No matter how great you are, if you can become, no, even if they make you a pastor of a church, don't let titles make you graduate yourself from the school of the spirit. Go and sit down. Pastor Femi is here. He's the senior pastor in Rema. And you come and sit down quietly. There are many people having his position now who start running. You must learn to sit down. Don't allow the applause that men are giving. Don't let it see. Don't let it take you away from the school of the spirit. Hear me tonight. There is more. It's time to eat because the journey is far. The angel told the prophet, he said, eat for the journey is far. He ate a little and he slept. The angel woke him again. He said, eat for the journey is far. And the Bible says he ate and he went in the strength of that bread, a 40 days journey. Number three. You want to see an extraordinary anointing in your life. The price of total obedience. Total obedience. Total obedience. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. For time's sake, we will not read it. Just read 5 to 10. Specifically verse 8. If you can project that verse 8. Shut up, Alakato Parada. Sense the anointing of the spirit in this place. Philippians 2 verse 8. The Bible says, I'm being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became what? Obedient even unto death. Can I tell you something? There is a way you can be obedient that it will cost you. Are you listening to me? You must make up your mind whether you want to obey God 
or you want to obey men it will cost you it's called obedient unto death deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day that these blessings uh, you know I, I will i will exalt you shall be above all nations and this blessing shall come to you and overtake you then it begins to list downwards hallelujah very important matthew 7 the bible says he that heareth my words and doeth them not he that heareth my word and just dances no obedience 24 to 25 matthew 7 24 to 25 it's like to a wise man that built his house upon the rock. I want to challenge you. Many of you, the reason why God is not working with you is because you don't have a heart to obey God. There are some of you here, the day God asks you to empty your account, you will bind and cast and lose and curse. And even write it as a prayer request. That voice that likes taking what God has given me, obedience obedience everybody say obedience obedience will cost you obedience will cost you they can give you a ministration somewhere there are great ministrations that have been given and the lord says no no i just tell the protocol no i'm not going i don't need to tell lies and say okay something uh -uh. I, i'm not going to go I remember one time there was a pastor who invited me and I was praying at the same time there was an NCCF meeting in Delta and for three days I kept seeing myself there and I had to call him because I had given him my word they were so excited they were preparing I said pastor I'm sorry to tell you but the Lord wants me to be the Lord wants me to be in Delta the pastor was so sad in his mind you say so because my church is now not as big as a state conference that's why you are not coming no not at all i paid my transportation i went there and at the end of it when i got there the lord told me you are not collecting an honorarium when they bring it bless it and give them back so it was not just it was not for money at all obedience hallelujah i've shared it well it's them is not it's not necessary it's not something i'll say now but somebody brought a huge gift for me one time this year and when he brought it i just looked at him and i told him i said mm -mm. as he was he was trying to offer me i said no way already god had told me no how many of you can say no when god says no how many of you can say yes when god says yes you are afraid of being different you are afraid of being criticized. You are not ready for an extraordinary anointing. Because one day, God will tell you to declare his counsel. And the fear of what men will say. Let me tell you something. Extraordinarily anointed people are stubborn people. They are men that can defy things. I don't mean rebellious. Mary said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Someone met me one day and said, don't you think meeting once a week is too small for koinonia? I looked at the person, I said, back to sender. We don't do things just because we want to do it. No. As you see upon the mount, then you will do. If you do what God did not direct, you will defend it by yourself. Hallelujah obedience to the principles of the word obedience to the voice of the spirit many of us when we started with god one of the things that made our spiritual journey well was because we were living by the principles of god many of us are waiting for a word from god or a vision or a supernatural experience but you are not obeying the truth of god's word that you are seeing you want extraordinary finances you are not tithing you're not giving. You see somebody coming every week to give tight. So are, are you sure this guy is not pretending it? Are you the only one God is blessing? <laughs> the performance is for obedient people. The performance is not just for hearers. Make up your mind to obey the word. No matter what it will cost you. 
Hallelujah. The last scripture there, Jeremiah 7.23. Jeremiah 7.23. God is separating people in this place to give them extraordinary anointings. He said, but this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. He said, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. You want it to be well with you, it will be on the wings of obedience. Hallelujah. Years ago, after we came back from our crusade, it was a powerful time. PFN called us and they said, we want you to come and establish a branch of your ministry. They were ready to give us an auditorium and give us pastors to train. I was excited. I went to the Lord. The Lord just answered me and said, you will die. That was exactly what I repeated to the people. I said, the Lord said, I will die. Yeah. Obedience. It's difficult to obey when you are going to lose a lot. It's easy to obey when the obedience is on to gaining something immediate. Obedience. I choose to obey the word. I choose to live by its truth. Number four. There are many of you who have done these three. But the fourth key is what you have missed. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. Look at me. Everybody. How many of you have seen someone cutting a tree? Do you know that if you keep hitting that tree, it looks like nothing is happening. There is one final hit that will cut the tree. That was not the strongest hit. It was the most consistent one. Are you listening to me? Many of us, listen, and let me tell you something. One of the greatest lessons, or yes, one of the greatest lessons that the Lord has taught me in this life is that it pays to wait upon the Lord. Impatience has cheated many people out of the blessings of God in this life. We are in a hurry for everything. Everybody say the price of consistency. Consistently doing the same thing. Regardless of the outcome. Regardless of the outcome. You tight and you don't see the blessing. You say, I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. I know that God is behind his word. Great people in life are those who have done certain things consistently. Galatians 6 verse 9. Do not be weary in well doing. He said for we will reap in due season. If we faint not. Do not be weary in well doing. He said and let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap. Everybody say I will reap. Yeah. Some of you have been coming for koinonia. Again and again. Six months things have not changed. Do not be wary. If it is what you are doing well, don't be wary. The Bible says you will reap because you are sowing. The only way the devil can kill your harvest is to stop you from sowing. The Bible says, He that sows unto the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. In 1 Kings 18 from verse 30 to 46, we will not read it, just write it down. 1 Kings 18 Verse 30 to 46. The Bible says, Elijah prayed seven times. Everybody say seven times. If Elijah stopped at the sixth time, it would not work. He had to pray how many times? In fact, the Bible is so graphic. It says he prayed the first time. He sent the servant, go and check. The man said, nothing. Oh. Consistency. Is what separates ordinary people and extraordinary people. Consistency. Consistency. 
consistency. You pray no matter the outcome. You study the word no matter the outcome. Consistency. Many of us, when we are at the edge, you are at the verge of a breakthrough. That's when many of us give up. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5, you read from verse 1 to 4, but let's just focus on verse 4. 2 Kings 5, the Bible says, the prophet had told Naaman, he said, if you want to be clean, go and dip yourself. How many times? Seven times. Naaman was complaining and grumbling. It didn't change him. The Bible says, ah, I thought they were protecting it. Hallelujah. Naaman dipped himself how many times? Don't worry, just do your work, media. Seven times. Do you know what it means to dip yourself? Many of you were baptized. They dip you only once. Imagine a great man. He entered the water. He entered and came out. He asked the slave girl, how many? She said, one. Do it again. He entered, came out. At the fourth time, he was already embarrassed. He was looking like mud. God said seven times, Mr. Man. Consistency. Consistency. There are many of you, you are looking for a prophet to prophesy to you. Nobody comes. God says, just continue doing what you are doing. That's the only prophetic word you need. Keep doing it. Pastor Chris will say what? How, how does he say it? Keep speaking it. Don't stop saying it. Be consistent. Some of you start preparing for an extraordinary life. And impatience will just cancel it out. How, and you know, see, it's dangerous because when you start a journey, you get to a point where you are in the middle. You, it's too far for you to go back and then you can't reach there. Many of us start the journey and you go back. You are traveling to Abuja. You've now gotten to Abuja Kaduna Expressway. And you say, Kai, this journey is too far. I went to Meduguri on, on road. I slept and woke up I don't know how many times. I asked the driver how many more hours. He said six or seven. I said, what? We've been on this journey since. I had to sleep on the road. But did that mean we were missing the way? See, that you have to wait does not mean you made a wrong decision. Continue. John 6 verse 15. I mean Joshua 6 verse 15. The crossing of Jericho. Joshua 6 verse 15. The Bible says, on that seventh day, you can imagine, to throw a big wall, God gave them an instruction. They went round once. The people in Jericho were wondering, who are these madmen? They had to die to themselves to know that whatever God tells you to do, it will work. On the seventh day, they now started going one, two, three, four, five. Madness. Six. At the seventh time, they blasted the trumpet. And the Bible tells us, see, the wall of Jericho did not fall down. It sank. Because the Bible says on the wall, five chariots could stand on it. So even if it falls, it will become another wall again. Sank. John 20, verse 11. When I was preparing these notes, I just put all these scriptures. And the Holy Spirit told me, no, there's one more. My people must hear. John 20 verse 11. The Bible says when Jesus resurrected, all the disciples came. And the one Jesus loved checked the tomb. And they saw that Jesus was not there. They checked once and they ran away. But the Bible says Mary Magdalene stayed there. Everybody say consistency. And when she checked again, suddenly she saw an angel. Consistency. Consistency requires patience. It requires uncommon patience. It requires grace. Hallelujah. Many people in ministry, they start and then God is telling them just be consistent. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Teach your message. It may not be popular, but don't compromise. If, do you know that is impatience and lack of consistency that makes people to derail from the things of God and get into witchcraft. They are looking for fast, fast fame, fast everything. 
They want a jeep fast. Fast jeep. One of the greatest revelations that God has put in me is the beauty of patience. I can wait. I've killed hurry from my life. I can wait. Some of you are in a hurry for everything. And this is your own becoming. You are in a hurry to, you want digital hearing God now. Let you just say, thank you, Jesus. And God just begins to talk. Five minutes later, he has finished. You say, I give you praise. Unfortunately, his system is not like that. They that wait. Hallelujah. Very important. Consistency. These four things are the things that I practice in my own life every time. And I'm determined not to stop it. This last one is probably new to many people. You are just seeing the power of consistency. Consistency. When you want to build a house, the workers come every day. They put three blocks today. Tomorrow they come again. They add four blocks. I was checking the database of Koinonia. And I found out we are getting close to 5,000. The database, people who have been blessed, who have come to worship. I remember when we started it, 20 people, new people, 40 people, 20 people today, 100 people, 60 people, 400 people. Consistency. Everybody say consistency. I play a bit of keyboard. When I started, I was fairly consistent. And then I stopped being consistent. Do I like keyboard? Yes. Am I blessed by it? Yes. Can I play like I can? No. Why? You are not consistent. You see why many people are not consistent in God's presence. That's why they don't know when God speaks a thing. Consistency. Consistency. That's why we have a lot of people who are not stable with spiritual things. You run to this man of God today. Abuja or Lagos or wherever. You say, man of God, my life must change. He said, come and sit down under the word. Two weeks later, I said, man of God, it has not changed though. He said, just continue. He said, oh, let me find one that can give this thing to me sharp, sharp. Many of us have entered into all kinds of things. All kinds of things. Everybody say, I will, I will continue in the things that I've started. Consistency. Let's do a quick review. Number one, the price of consecration. The price of consecration. Number two, the price of revelation. Consecration will kill you. You will take up the agenda of God and forget about your own agenda. There are some of you who finish service. You want to run and go for work. God will say, uh -uh. for you, you are exempted. The normal law is to look for a job. You, you are exempted. You are a lady, you finished. You are just planning. Thank God I will get married. God will say, uh-uh. You are going to marry in the next three years. Give me these three years of your life. Say, back to sender. I've always known. Enemy of progress. Now that is my breakthrough. It's my turn to shine. Consecration. You must die to yourself. You can't do everything. There are many of us, every program, secular or Christian, you are there. Something happens in TJ Palace, you come. You are happy. You just sit down there. Later, I say, Kai, it's time for fellowship. Let me run. And you, you wonder why your ears is as if they put cotton wool inside. You can't hear God. You always hear nonsense. Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark. If you lie down close to the ark, you will hear the voice of God. An extraordinary life. I'm saying this today because it will happen by the Spirit. He and I will be an extraordinary ministry. I won't be. I have come to the end of my sin. Take over, Jehovah, 
I have touched the end of my Listen, don't be in a hurry in your life. Stop following the plan that people have carved for themselves to define success. You will fall into a ditch you may not recover from. Receive the blueprint. When you see your life becoming strange, it's a sign that there is an uncommon call upon your life. Endure it. It's working for others, but when God gets to you, you will train others and raise them, but you, God, will say, sit down. There is a reason. You are coming to the end of yourself. I remember one man who God instructed and said until he buys 15 cars for people before he buys one for himself. At the end of the third car, the wife told him, see, I'm going to leave you. I've been keeping quiet about this thing. It's paining me. Because people started embarrassing the woman. They say something is wrong with your husband and you are a foolish woman. You won't go and do something about it. 15! That was the instruction God gave him. This guy will walk like an elephant and carry money and buy car. A Jimmy's mother of blessed memory. Before she went to be with the Lord, she was preparing to buy a nice car for herself. And then the Lord gave her an instruction that she should buy a brand new Toyota Corolla and go and give one of her junior staff. How many people will slap you when you do that kind of thing? Ladies, if your husband comes and says, Honey, come and give me a hug first and a kiss. And you feel, he say, What's, what is it? I can't wait. He said, God has spoken. He said, All right, sit down. Now, we are going to evacuate this house, said the Spirit of God. The house that you built with your own money. They will call you from the village quick. They will say, Come back home. Before you come home, they are prepared what will recover you from that mindset. So say, just drink this before we start talking because you are nowhere. Mad men are the ones who have changed this world. Uncommon people, uncommon people, uncommon people. Some of you have to trek long distances to come for Koinonia every week, but you are determined. Consistency, go for revelation, stop doing cheap ministry. You will start insulting great people. Don't join that group. Stay with the spirit until you catch a substance of life. When you have a message, I promise you the world will hear you. Forget about money. Chase God, you will find other things. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. And his righteousness and all other things. A time will come if somebody pays you one million per week, he has insulted you. You hold on. If you can endure. He that endures to the end. Not stop at the middle. If you start a race. A marathon. And you're running. Assuming you're supposed to go around Zaria. You started from ABU. You're you are almost coming. And you are at um, energy research. And you collapse there. Will they say, hey yeah we understand. We saw your effort. We have been watching you. When they list the names of those who are disqualified, they will put your name there. So the person who just started from here to aviation and stopped, and you, you have now been put in the same class. Everybody say, I'll be consistent. Say, I'll be consistent. Pray in tongues. It's too early to pray and start saying, oh, I'm looking. It's something. Mm -mm. Koinonia is where we are today because we have been consistent. For four years, God trained us. We're coming every night. People were sitting on the floor. Pastor Williams and his wife with the kids sometimes will come all the way from Sabo. Married people, they will come and sleep in the student's hostel. They are looking for something. Tomorrow now, somebody will see him and the wife will say, how are we sure? This woman said, she's just chopping, ripping where she didn't sow. Somebody spoke against um, Catherine Ma Maria Woodward eat her. She said, The Lord judge you. The person's tongue became like banana until he wrote an official letter of apology and she slapped it back. Hallelujah. I was told, Was it Oedeko or, or Adeboe that somebody saw the things that they were doing and the woman just hissed and trivialized it? Oedeko. 
That woman was barren for I don't know how many years from the story. One time she went to a prophet searching for solution. The man wanted to pray for her and he said, stop. God is revealing to me that you have offended a great man of God. This is what is responsible. She called the name. The woman packaged a seed. Don't worry. Those who are talking against you will sow into your life for recovery from their madness tomorrow. Just continue. continue. Anytime you see a great man, I was, I was speaking to my sister, you know, she was over at my place and I was talking to them and I was telling them something. I said, one of the greatest things I've learned in life, listen to me. See, if you try to defend yourself, hear me, you are, God, God doesn't have anything to do again. Are you listening to me? There are many of us, they just, you just pray for five hours. You want to explain to everybody. Ah, ah. Be convinced about this. At every point of your life, those who love you are greater than those who don't. Don't lose touch with those who truly love you and be focusing on a few people. Out of the twelve, it was only Judas who didn't love Jesus, not eleven. Jesus focused on the people who loved him. Some of us want, who loves me? Do you like me? Do you don't like me? Do you don't like me? You say, why now? Let me, let me make you like me extraordinary people are lonely people lonely people until they arrive and then everybody will see Moses was alone they didn't come for visit for him they didn't send any bounty from Egypt they thought he was dead but when God was done with him he became a sign and a wonder are you ready to pray tonight rise up on your feet rise up on your feet we are going to cry to the Lord the Lord is calling you into an extraordinary anointing. Into an extraordinary anointing. We are going to pray for just five minutes. And we'll round up. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Everyone hold your hands together and let's pray in tongues for just one minute. Zembra teka poka sapota kata balada bakati gadaba. There's a realm, a realm of the extraordinary, the realm of champions. That's where world changers dwell. It's a mountain where the eagles dwell, not where the birds are, not where the chickens are. It's a pedestal. It's a plane in the spirit. Is the place for mighty men, is the place for great men, writers of history, history makers, world shakers, ambassadors indeed, men whom the earth is not worthy of. Come on, pray. Se prosko pote kete lebo kotia. Se proske bosh. Se kete ke prosko se ke priada. Ale prosko so preska. Re kete keta. Ke prosko prete keta la mama mama. Re poto prete la mama mama. Prayer point number one. Lord, I refuse an an ordinary life from today. I make a vow and a commitment. I will not be ordinary. Go ahead. Not in business. Not in leadership. Not in my job. Not in ministry. I contend for an extraordinary anointing. I refuse to be average. Not in ministry. An extraordinary healing ministry. An extraordinary deliverance ministry. An extraordinary preaching ministry. An extraordinary apostolic ministry. Pray. An extraordinary prophetic ministry. Extraordinary evangelical ministry. Pray. I will be an extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary, worshiper. An extraordinary businessman. 
tell yourself I am destined to be great My parents may not know it Pray The people in my community may not know it But I'm determined I refuse I refuse the ordinary I refuse the ordinary My name will be written In the sands of time That I did terrible things in righteousness Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray all of these four things. Grace to pay the price for consecration. Grace to pay the price for revelation and intimacy. Grace to pay the price for obedience. Grace to be consistent. You know where you have been, where have been faulting. Lift your voice and pray. Grace, oh God. Grace, 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 to separate myself from the cares of this world, grace, not to entangle myself with the lusts and appetites that hinder the anointing, grace, lift your voice and cry, grace to live a sanctified life grace to live a life that is set apart grace grace pay the price pay the price lamentations 327 it is good that a young man bear his youth his, his, his yoke in his youth pray for grace lift your voice and pray grace for revelation Grace for revelation. Say, Lord, grace to be a student of the word. I will buy books. I will buy tapes. Day and night. Day and night. I will sit with the word. Day and night. I will sit with the word. Pray for intimacy with the Holy Ghost. Tell yourself, Holy Spirit. I'm tired of pretending like I know you. I want to enter a tangible experience. I want to hear your voice. I want to walk with you. Koinonia. I long for that intimacy. Pray for grace to obey. Lift your voice and pray for grace. Grace to obey. Lord, I've been disobedient. Lift your voice and pray. Grace to obey. No matter what it will cost you, you will be different. They will mock you. They will criticize you. Every great man followed that path. You are not the first. You will not be the last. Enjoy it. Pass through it. Enjoy it. Pass through it. When you become great, your life will explain the process. Pass through it. Make up your mind to obey God. Be uncompromising no matter what it will cost you. Finally, pray for consistency. Consistency. Some of you stop doing the things that brought you to this realm. That's why you've not gone higher. Lift your voice and pray. Consistency. I will stop fasting. I will stop fasting. I will stop praying. No. No. Nothing will make me stop fasting. Nothing will make me stop praying. I will stay with the word. I will read books. I will watch videos. I will spend time in worship. I will build myself. I will develop myself. I will learn from great people who have gone ahead of me. I will give my eyes no sleep until I do the things that will move me forward. No matter the commendations, I will let it get into me. I make up my mind to be consistent. To be consistent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the secret. This is the secret. There is nothing mysterious about it. 
I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. See, this is the dynamics of miracles. I'm explaining to you the inner workings of the miraculous. It happens because all that you see is not all that there is. This realm is a three-dimensional realm, physics tells us, and is limited. The realm of the spirit has other dimensions, meaning there are other possibilities beyond the scope of our intellect. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. This is the realm of wisdom that kings reign by. He said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. He said, with me are riches, wealth and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Tonight is not just for you to receive a miracle, but to empower you. That when you make a statement, there is an understanding that forces that statement to come to pass. Hallelujah. When you talk to people about finances, the first idea that comes to their mind is business. Is that not true? What business? Okay, real estate. Okay, stocks. Okay, this and that. I've said it again and again. Again and again. That I don't care what business you do or what job you are having. You will struggle forever until there is a spiritual factor that is at work. Are you getting me? Yes. The Bible says you have an unction from the Holy One. He said that unction can teach you. Isaiah 48 from verse 17. He says, I am the Lord thy God that teacheth thee to profit and lead you in the way that you should go. There is an anointing. This heat and run trial and error life must end tonight. We can walk circumspectly on the strength. Listen, you can be 70 years old and have an error about life for that long. Are you getting me? A whole nation can be wrong. Our society, we transfer knowledge upon the strength of what we know or what we have been told. When man ran away from God, he said, Adam, where are thou? Genesis 3. He says, the Lord had the talking spirit, the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where are thou? He said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. He said, who told you? Meaning your life is a summation of the informations you have gotten and you have believed. But could it be that what you have held as truth all your life may not necessarily be accurate? Taught by well-meaning people, there is the life of the kingdom and there is the life of this world system, cosmos. We are not the same. It says you are in the world, but you are not of the world. There is a plane of reality you must function for. Hallelujah. So number one, an encounter with the world. You need an encounter with the world. The word of God does three things among many other things. Please write. Number one, the word of God shows you the basis upon which you will receive any promise. The word of God shows you the basis the realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Everybody say legal realm. So you don't just, you can play crooks in the earth realm here, but not in the realm of the spirit. Everything is done legally and legitimately. If you ever see anything manifest itself, certain laws were applied. Praise the Lord. So the word of God shows you the basis Remember in our, our series, uh, the teaching, Give Me This Mountain. I teach about the spiritual dimension of life. That there are gates on every mountain. Everybody say there are gates on every mountain. When you get to that mountain of breakthrough, there are gates. It will not just open because you are a Christian. When Jesus in Psalm 24 was about to come out from the grave, the Bible says there were gates. The psalmist saw it. I said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, O ye ancient doors. Did they open? No, sir. They asked a question, who is this king of glory? Give us the basis of your audacity. Upon what are you standing? And he says, he is the Lord, strong and mighty. The one who just defeated dark 
darkness and the gates open so when you stand to receive the miracle oh god change my story from ss to aa there will be a question in the spirit upon what strength that's the parable that jesus was giving the parable right of two men who built houses one upon sand the other upon a rock two houses were built but what supported them became the distinguishing factor praise the lord the basis it's important for you to know the basis let me tell you very straight and uh, in a in a way that does not require any confusion everybody writes the finished work of christ this is the basis this is the reason it is the one master factor the finished work of christ i love jesus i love jesus many of us need to meditate on what he really did for us do you know that it is on the strength of what happened on the cross the way access the veil has been torn and it's given us access access revelations 5 revelations 5 verse 9 very quickly please let's hurry up so that we can do much tonight revelations 5 and they sang a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof it says for thou was slain and you have redeemed us unto god how by thy blood that's the basis the substitutionary work of christ i told you you can get our teaching the speaking blood i told you blood is a key in the spirit is that true blood is a key in the spirit everybody's blood can open certain doors but not every door that's why when you go to a herbalist he will he will calculate by divination and tell you the kind of blood that will open the gate you want so the blood of jesus is the greatest because it is the master key there is no door that it cannot open it says out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation verse 10 it says and has made us unto our god kings and priests and as a result we shall reign everybody say dominion he has given us access to dominion access to dominion praise the lord so when you study the word of god it gives you the basis so when you stand and say i'm tired of this cancer or i'm tired of this barrenness it's been five years I've not been able to take in the realm of the spirit will ask you so upon what now do you believe you will take in and you tell them there is a key that has opened that door there is a key the blood of the eternal covenant hallelujah everybody say the blood of Jesus is my access to my inheritance one more time say the blood of Jesus is my access to my inheritance you're not just saying it after me you are confessing say the blood of Jesus is my access to my inheritance hallelujah that's the reason why you will get married that's the reason why the devil must leave tonight that's the reason why the genotype must change that's the reason why every prophetic word that comes upon you must produce result. That's the reason why as many of you standing outside, although you are far, but the ministry of that blood can still speak. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. Not just because preachers said the blood is powerful. I have a revelation of the significance of the blood. Revelation is powerful it produces true faith in your spirit so that you are not believing blindly you are believing upon the strength of an understanding so the blood of jesus is your basis for receiving breakthroughs and when we stand up to pray and we begin to challenge the gates of hell you don't stand weak 
and you are wondering and say do you know nobody in my family has crossed this barrier you say well i couldn't cross it but that blood created a divide and i must walk past it look let me tell you the bible says let me show you something isaiah 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 let's look at isaiah isaiah help me holy spirit isaiah 41 verse 21 I saw this scripture in 2004 and it changed my life. Isaiah 41, 21. Everybody read. One to read. Look, God is speaking like a judge in a law court. Are you getting me? He said, produce your cause. He said, bring forth your strong reason. Give me a scriptural basis to bless you justify your qualification to step into a new level you don't say that just by jacking yourself you lift up the blood and say this is my basis this is my basis upon the strength of what your son did he has given me access to health he has given me access to the blessing of the Lord praise God Number two, an encounter with the word of God brings you to agree with God. It brings you to agree with God. We call that, listen, we call that alignment and transformation. Alignment and transformation. Somebody come. Please look for that scripture for me. With God, all things are possible. Right? Somebody come. Anybody? Watch this. An encounter with the word of God. Remember I told you in our teaching yes, um, last week, right? The reality of what? Spiritual laws. I told you that no man can activate any law by himself. Is that true? A spirit entity, either the Holy Spirit or another spirit must work with you. So in the realm of the spirit, partnership is the order of things. You cannot do anything alone. Either a demon spirit or the spirit of God must assist you. So the Bible says, you are yet to find it. Matthew, Matthew 19, 26, media. Are you getting my point now? The problem with many people is that we are far apart. This is where God is standing. This is God's mindset. Right? It says, as far as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts, my ways. Is that true? So this is God standing. And he's saying, come and join me. But she's standing here and saying, Lord, I need you to help me. And God is saying, it's against the law. You have to find, come, I supply grace. You take advantage of that grace and come. When we are together. So the Bible says, with God. Come with God all things become possible so without God nothing becomes possible so that cancer with God becomes possible you see that are you getting my point that admission with God the Bible says with God so koinonia miracle service with God will produce result the, 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 this is the mystery this is the mystery of impact with God. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed. Why? For God was with. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them. This is the mystery. Divine assistance coming into God's realm. You no longer become an enemy of your own destiny. And we call that alignment and transformation. That's one of the major ministries of the word. So the word of God begins to advocate a superior mindset. Higher and greater than the ideology you've held on to. It may be cultural. It may be intellectual. Right? It may be societal. 
But when the word of God begins to judge you, it shows you the excellency of God's own mindset. And it's up to you to say, Lord, although this is all I've believed my, all my life. For instance, there are people who are here with certain terminal diseases and they have been told, they've lived all their lives believing. They didn't even come for the miracle service for that specific case to be healed. They came for something else. Right? Because according to their mind, it has not yet become a possibility that God can address that issue. But when he looked at the tomb where Lazarus had been buried, he said, roll away the stone. Proof that I can raise Lazarus back by you going to open up that case that you have closed. Praise the Lord. I believe God. I'm a believer. I truly believe him. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It says, Lean not on your own understanding. The next verse says, In all your ways, not some. It didn't say, Talk to him. It says, Acknowledge him. You acknowledge a man by giving him preference. It says, And as a result, he will direct your path. Next verse says, Be not wise in your own understanding. It says, Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Hallelujah very important so with god this lady may be weak unable to do anything but with god with god she may be broke suffering nothing is working but all of a sudden she comes and she finds out that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. She begins to learn the ways of God. That he can open up the heavens. That it is the blessing of the Lord. Not your business. It is the blessing. The blessing makes everything you do prosper. That's why it says whatsoever he doeth prospers. So it's not about what you are doing. It's about the spiritual factor that supports what you are doing. So, with God, with God, she suddenly becomes powerful. All of a sudden, doors of favor open up to her because she has chosen to leave her old mindset and come to God. Listen to me, tonight, the first miracle you need to have is to give up on your ideologies and say, Lord, I'm tired. Because your life is a reflection of your ideologies. I don't care what the situation is. I told us last week that your environment will eventually become a reflection of what? Your belief system and your ideology. He said, let this mind, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, let this mind, the word let there is permit. Permit this mind. Please, I know that you came from Kaduna State and Kaduna State, there may be a way you thought about in your village. I know that you came from from the east and there is a way that they thought i know that you come from the west i know that you come from katsina tonight will you choose to become a citizen of the kingdom by adopting the ideologies of the king subscribe to a new government every government has an economic system every government has a political system every government has a welfare system if you been evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more shall your heavenly father but that law is only operational for the sons of the kingdom hallelujah the word of god brings you into alignment listen when i begin to study the word of god or when she begins to study the word of god and she finds out that there is an ideology that she has that fights against the word of god you will be foolish to argue with the word of God. The word of God predates our existence. It has been tried through dispensations. The word of God is a description of his character. His operation with man. And I told you that the efficacy of the word transcends Genesis 1. It's beyond that. It predates Genesis 1. I told you Genesis 1 is not the first creation. We've, we've settled that, right? Job 38. Those of you who are just coming... This is Koinonia. Get the series. Hallelujah. There, there is a lot of creation. Genesis 1, uh, Isaiah 38 begins to give us how the foundation of the earth was created. Praise the Lord. The question I'm asking you, 
is I know you want God to bless you. But could it be that the devil that needs to go out today is not the one in your village? Is the one that has stayed in your mind like a stronghold. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To what? The pulling down of strongholds, casting down every yazar, imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ, and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Praise the Lord. So, we have been given a poverty mentality as Africa. We have been taught that until you are 25 or 30, don't think about finances, don't think about blessing, don't think about empowerment. And you are told that you are too young to carry the power of God, or you are a lady, you shouldn't carry the power of God. These are the ideologies that cosmos markets to us, but you must refuse it. Say, I refuse. Shout it, I refuse. Mm. You must refuse it. You must refuse it. Who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? I honor the doctors, but do you know that there are many people who, are, who have several sicknesses, but it never affects them because they do not have a medical report to validate it. You went to check headache. They said, my brother, this thing is more than headache. Well, I, you mean you would have died now? We have a lot of doctors here. Doctors, I love you. Praise the Lord. But now when you check and they tell you, huh, do you know that your liver is almost in fact you say you you mean it hi from that time your liver starts paining you physically right and then the doctor tells you you have two weeks to live all of a sudden somebody says there's an opportunity god is lifting us they let him lift you there i'm dying i believe the report of the lord I believe the report of God. See, listen. You don't see with your eyes. You see through your eyes. There is a spiritual agency for sight. You only see through these physical eyes. It's not what you see with. They are just the physical components that enable your true spiritual eye to see. And Paul prayed that that eyes be flooded with light. Praise the Lord. So we need alignment. That's why you can pray for people. Pray for them. Lay hands on them. Do whatever you want to do. Did you know that sometimes you finish praying and then the people walk right back because their mindset betrays what God wants to do in their lives. That's what happened to the nation of Israel. Right? Everything you have told Moses we will do oh. After two weeks, they say, Kai, a, a delegation comes and they say, Moses, we, we need an explanation. Go and bring Baal. Make something for us that we can see. This mysterious God who comes with smoke, we don't know this one. Please, make something we know. They limited God in the wilderness. A man's mindset can limit God as mighty as he is. I refuse to limit you. Number three, the word of God, an encounter with the word of God shows you your part of the deal. It shows you the part you have to play to commit God to a performance. Never forget this. There is a part that you have to play, brothers and sisters. Every promise in scripture requires a partnership on your own part. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 it says if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day right and then it talks about um, you being exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if there is a condition Isaiah 1 19 if ye be willing and obedient you will eat the good of your the land not if ye be hungry and desperate if ye be what willing and obedient. there is a condition there is a condition there are always conditions so an encounter with the word reveals to me my part of god's prosperity package lord you want to bless me what is my role right 
I want to step into levels of the anointing. The word of God shows me. is See, reading the word is like walking in your promised land. It says walk left and right. See everything as far as your eyes have seen. So, read, studying the word of God is like touring your promised land. And you come back and say, Lord, as I read, I found this and that. And God says, all right, here's the condition. Everything is yours for a taking. You can enter a restaurant. Immediately you enter the restaurant, you see a lap of an agri chicken and you start smiling. But you came there with 100 naira. There is a condition. You want to be a possessor. You want to make that thing become a present reality. There is a price tag. Nobody stops you. There's no policeman to stop you. But you can watch it like a museum and salivate and watch right and nothing happens you may be 30 years but a little baby will come with his father and he say mommy i like this and whatever he likes keep giving it to him the container did not refuse to open your part i know you are laughing because i spoke about food but get the revelation because the issue in your life is more than food praise god Oh God, change my story. God says, come let me show you your part of the deal. He said, God, I don't want you. You have died for me. Mm -mm. Listen, listen, listen. Making the word of God work in your life. Making that which he has done to work in your life will require a participation on your own part. Please understand this. Praise the Lord. Are we following? So these three things. Tonight, as you are seated here, there are some of us, the reason why certain levels of breakthrough have not come into our lives is because we have not been able to support our claims in prayer with a basis. You have, you have always every power challenging me. You better leave. Because of what? Why should they leave? Do you know what brought them in the first place? They were there before you were born. So I came to Koinonia. Every demon, I'm tired of you. <laughs> That's not what drives them. You, you don't, they don't go because you are tired. 38 years that man was lying down at a pool that wicked spirit did not say kai 37 38 oh yeah let me allow you you have tried you would have remained there forever in five minutes five minutes meaning time does not change anything light is what changes things it will change tomorrow you are wasting your time arise and shine not because you are tired of sitting isaiah 64 thy light is come Are you getting blessed? So there are some of us here, what you need is to understand a revelation of what Jesus Christ has done. You think the reason why you may get everything is because you are bold or because you are prayed. It's not that. There is a revelation. The blood of Jesus. For years I had Ren had Bonke talk about the blood of Jesus so much. He, he equated blood and fire. And I didn't, I couldn't quite get it until I found out that blood was a key in the spirit. That's why every religion has blood as part of their component. This is the one factor that every religion agrees upon. Blood. Hallelujah. And there are some of us here, the problem is our mindset. God wants to bless us, he wants to lift us, but there is a mindset. Oh, I'm a lady. Oh, I'm coming from so so and so, I cannot even speak English. Oh, this and that and that and that. I've not even gotten admission. Or, oh, me, I just want a little this. Or, I made that and that. Huh? Or, God, I want you to bless me, but it must happen through NMPC. If you are Lord, it must happen through NMPC. They limited God. You're asking God for a cup and he wants to give you an ocean. Hallelujah. That's the problem with the body of Christ. Our faith is what I call auxiliary faith. Faith that is standing on something. Tied to the neck of your uncle. So every time you say, Lord bless me, what you mean is press that uncle's neck until he responds to me. Your faith is not really standing upon the word of God. Your faith, every time you say, Lord, I, 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 I know you are changing my story. What you are simply saying, oh Lord, I know my uncle will not sleep until my... No, no, no. Why don't you give him the option to bring the strategy? And you say, Lord, I don't care how it will be. I may not see wind I may not see rain but one thing I know because let me tell you your strategy is most of the time carnal but his strategy becomes spiritual 
when he gives you a strategy it may look foolish but that's the way he has chosen it right go around jericho that's the strategy oh i'm already ahead of myself the second way to receive a miracle or the second platform now first is an encounter with the word of god second is the ministry of prayer the ministry of prayer is part of the equation to receiving a miracle there must be the ministry of prayer it does two things number one prayer challenges the forces of darkness fighting against the manifestation of the promise in your life Ephesians 6 verse 12 the Bible clearly tells us that we are not alone in this world we have strangers who are trying to escort us every day every time wicked spirits stratified in different cadres right so you are always not alone the devil attempts to seek entrance into different dimensions of your life and given the opportunity he will wreck your life the goal to mock the testimony of god in your life praise the lord so there are giants on every mountain please don't let anybody fool you there are giants on every mountain if you get into a mountain and the door is already open somebody already killed the giant but there were giants there for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers rulers of darkness spiritual wickedness in heavenly places the stratification of the demonic kingdom so between you and your breakthrough there are giants it takes the ministry of prayer hallelujah when you pray you authorize heaven to look into your situation because god is not committed to step into your situation without your asking him to genesis 1 26 from the day he said let them have dominion but god is supposed to know now doesn't he love me well it will not change the bones kept staring at ezekiel until something happened praise the lord you come for miracle service and you find out that as the word is coming like this there are still people seated oppressed of demons right some of these demons are hearing what i'm saying now they are just shaking but they are not going yet let's see if we will go must we really go yes by the time we begin to pray we activate the energy the force right it's a force of compliance it brings everything to the obedience of christ so that's why you need to pray you pray to command the forces of darkness that are stopping your access to bow number two this is an even greater reason why we pray prayer reveals the exact and the unique strategy to bring the promise to manifestation please never forget this when you pray in the place of prayer God reveals to you his unique strategy for you so you have walked through scripture and you have seen that God has told you that you are to walk in breakthrough but now the Bible may not give you the nitty-gritty of what to do in your unique situation prayer when you begin to pray the Spirit of God begins to search the mind of God concerning your situation and the Bible says how that he searches all things and he prays according to the will of God so you begin to pray and then the lord tells you okay now this is the strategy you are going to meet benga benga will introduce you to femi and femi will introduce you to prof that's how the miracle will come it is a strategy for only you somebody will do it and fail are you seeing why prayer is powerful this is this is am i blessing you in my opinion i think this is already a miracle for somebody i'm showing you the loopholes some of us have seen the promise you have agreed with god but the problem is the strategy in ancient times kings won war not on the strength of their army but the dexterity of their strategy 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 so joshua stood still and god began to give him the strategy he said joshua this is how we we'll throw this wall down walk around seven times did you ever see that repeated in the bible because it was a strategy right he told gideon take the people by the riverside and let them take water study the way they take water you will use it as a separation strategy
Somebody has come tonight to receive strategy. Lord, how do I complete this house? You calculated your salary based on your salary to take 10 years. And God says, I can show you a strategy. The Bible says, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. A wicked king slept in the night, dreamt and forgot it and was going to punish people for his forgetfulness. Right? And a man called Daniel. One of the greatest prayers that I've been praying in this season is Lord's strategy. It is all about strategy. I'm telling you. God will show you something that does not make sense but is his strategy for you. Everyone will do it and fail but it's what you will do. Hallelujah. So you look at that business and you are praying and God will say, uh -uh, my strategy for you is take that business out of where you are. Take it to another place. Isaac already knew he had the blessing upon him, but he needed a strategy. Right? That's why every time kings would fight, they would go and inquire, what is the strategy for this war? They will not use yesterday's strategy for today's war. They will fail woefully. And so they will go, should I pursue? And the Lord will say, this is how it will happen. Like in the days of Jehoshaphat, put worshippers in front. Other times he said, walk around seven times. Other times he said, just be still. Get a stone and sit down and watch what I will do. Strategy. Question. The strategy you are using for your life now, who gave you? I saw another man do it, you see. He just went and started selling tomato. You see, it, it, God said he will bless you. But what drove you into it? I, I, a man must work. Don't stop those kind of demonic thinking. There must be a strategy. Oh Lord, change my story. I think I'll start selling shoes. Just like that. Just like that. The Bible says, as they began to pray, the Holy Ghost said, separate me Paul and Barnabas. If they were to choose, they would have carried somebody else. Right now. When we begin to pray, I am convinced that God will begin to reveal strategies for people. Hmm. Strategies on how to make the rain work. Some of you, listen, students, there are students here that all you need is one strategy. There is a course, everybody has told you this course, and you are face to face with that Goliath. You've been running away, but right, you are there now. You need a strategy. Hallelujah. There are some of you, maybe your project, a supervisor may be difficult and God can give you a strategy. The strategy may not necessarily be a direct revelation from the spirit. It can be light. A one scripture imprints in your spirit as you are praying. Oh God, what do I do about this, my supervisor? Suddenly a scripture comes. The gift of a man makes room. You quickly go and package wine. Not to bribe the man. You are responding to a strategy. Ordinarily, he would have thrown you out with your wine. But because you are doing it as a strategy. You will laugh and say, why did you have to do that? What is even your name? You have been disturbing me. It's a strategy. Hmm. Lord, give me strategy. You will see men do foolish things that don't make sense. That's what God told us. When, when we wanted to start giving access to our messages, I went to the Lord and the Lord told me, He said, make sure you do not sell any message. Keep the videos. Give out the MP3s. That's the strategy right you may do it for your ministry and you will lose a lot of money the blessing god has tied for your ministry you would but but it is a strategy it's a strategy when i said lord what is the key to the publicity and the increase and the expansion of this ministry in terms of membership god gave me a strategy it's not a secret mark one two three you may apply it and it may not work for you but that's what the lord gave and this is the mystery behind what you see i like you as you are seated before we stand up to pray, in one minute speak to the Lord. What is the strategy? Lord, my family has been struggling over this issue for years. Every time they want to build, there is no money. What is the strategy? Please take what I'm saying seriously. One strategy can change your situation. Not just a strategy you read from a book. One strategy. There is an easier way of doing it. That you have not seen it does not mean it's not there. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. In 24 hours, 
by the strategy of the spirit he gave victory please pray God has shown you your destiny helper but he's not paying attention to you one strategy will answer the question pray God has shown you the business he wants you to do but as it is you try and try you need strategy it's not like you didn't hear God the ministry of prayer you have been reading and reading you did well in 100 level 200 level by 300 level you started moving back because you need to change strategy you need to go to his majesty to show you strategy 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 please pray for your ministry sister you don't need all the money you think you need what you need is a strategy from the spirit believe me you have tried every idea you know you have tried everything they have told you why don't you cry before god come on now pray koinonia reveal unto me the strategy my family is suffering there is witchcraft in my family they have vowed but my father will not listen what is the strategy for the deliverance of my family everybody in my family is an unbeliever but i've seen in visions and dreams that they will all be saved between the promise and the manifestation what is the strategy lord i've applied for job everywhere civil defense immigration everywhere what is the strategy hallelujah strategy the last thing i'll talk about when we stand up we're going to do a quick walk very very quick walk the last step towards the manifestation of a miracle is that you must take action take action i want everybody to listen to me carefully because god is about to speak to us in a very definite way now i hope you have been blessed so far take action there are two enemies of action that are found from scripture number one fear fear everybody say fear fear is a dangerous and wicked spirit there are multi-millionaires sitting listening to me now but fear has stopped them from taking action there are many families you would have finished building your house since not just a bungalow that will kill you there are people seated here if you took the step god told you last year you would have been feeding your family this year fear tonight i'm showing you all the things th there is work to do tonight are you getting my point everybody shout i reject fear, I reject fear. oh fear does not respect age children fear adults fear great men fear macho men fear intelligent people fear right now africa is afraid nigeria is afraid many people are afraid the dollar is crashing everybody is afraid you don't know what to do right there's fear everywhere when the devil when god tells you get up and build the house this year that house must be built and all you have is hundred thousand and you calculate and you find out that the building will cost seven million and you are laughing you say god don't disgrace me let the people in the village not say i'm stupid take action listen the bible says this sign shall follow not go before you will never see the hand of god till you stand up and move this is somebody's this is a word from god to someone you have refused to move fear you wrote jam nine times you didn't get it god is saying this time you will get it say i'm not ready i better go to the restaurant and eat food with that money see that fear are we getting blessed let's look at two scriptures second timothy 1 verse 7 take it high please second timothy 1 verse 7 please help us media let's really hurry up we have to hurry up 
because we have some prayer to do are you seeing the things that are limiting us truly i am determined this year to see that every one of us has a testimony if nothing changes in your life this year then it's your fault but as far as the principles that will guarantee for you to experience the rain by the grace of god i will do my best for god had not given us the spirit of fear put your name there just that first clause one to read one more time praise the lord there are many of our loved ones 45 years brother are you ready to get out of your father's house i preached a message in 2008 it was a classic come out of your father's house thought provoking message to challenge people to leave their comfort zone there are some of us 30 35 40 who are still a big liability to our parents at home or god come out to say what i have now is twenty thousand. come out you have prayed you have fasted you have sown seeds you are giving look let me tell you if i am a father my when my child gets to a certain age one day you will just come and say young man in the name of jesus i release the blessing upon you go out out that's it i'm i'm very serious see you need to push yourself out of your comfort zone this year it's not just to say it's the year of the rain stand up and take action are you hearing what i'm saying change change what you have been doing kill fear take action and die doing it queen esther god took her to the palace god removed vashti and brought her for the salvation of israel but when mordecai spoke to her her man is plotting against these people you better go and meet the king she said ah please oh me too is 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 bring they brought me here please i'm not ready to face any embarrassment and mordecai said sit down there in fear paraphrasing sit down there when they finish with us the jews they will now say all of you in this palace bring your bio data and they will find out you are a jew too and they will kill you and she said if i perish i perish this is the year some of us are going to say if i i'm writing that jam again is god speaking to somebody i'm writing that jam again this is the year but I tried the business, I failed. You will do it again this year. Master, we have cast, he said, we have cast the net of, how do you put it now? Right? We have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, at thy word. I was going to get married. The person even did introduction. Later, he called and he said, he's not doing it again. And now, one godly brother is saying, I'm serious. He said, you look like that guy. Stand up and take action. Otherwise, you sit down and not get married all your life. In the name of Jesus, you will take action this year. Praise the Lord. There are some of us, God is speaking. Fear. Fear. Do you know fear puts people in bondage? More people die. There are many sicknesses today that are as a result of fear and worry. Is that true? What you are afraid of has not happened, but you are, you are almost dying from today now people have started running out of zaria for instance you can go if you want to go what I, <laughs> of course i'm not teaching you to be careless and just roam around you, but but I'll come on now people fear everything you are sleeping in the night you just light maybe it's the cloth you hung that just tilted in a way say i, I don't like the way this cloth why is it tilting and coming back who is there <laughs> fear fear has made people to say yes when they would have said no and they committed themselves into things you have no business committing yourself fear one of my friend's father listen true story one of my friend's father they would have been the earliest people to start pure water business in nigeria when god gave him that idea it was in a full gospel businessmen's fellowship right the idea came and he laughed thai water haba who will pay for water are we idiots there is stream there is sun there's light there's stove to warm water and he refused to take action and certain people took action do you think those who took the action are, are crying now this year you must take a handkerchief as you are crying be moving 
are you getting my point you must challenge that devil you have not broken through certain barriers nobody has ever crossed to the university in your family now you finish secondary school for instance and you're about to take that step and, and everybody said just you have tried you got diploma in, in, in software application are you not okay you are ahead yet every time you sleep you see a phd and the devil is telling you, you cannot move tonight we have come to call that devil a liar in the name of jesus christ say i will take action say i will take action that's right the second thing that stops action is laziness everybody say laziness my goodness our time is gone laziness very important proverbs chapter 10 verse 4 please proverbs 10 verse 4 and then later on we'll look at proverbs 22 verse 13 media please don't forget proverbs 10 verse 4 there are some of us the demon that needs to fly out of our life today not jump out fly out and never return is that spirit of laziness that inertia to move forward some of us sheer laziness the bible says he become a poor that dealeth with what you never stay around me and you become lazy i have zero tolerance for lazy people a young man of 30 years by 11 30 12 is still snoring on the bed you will beg for bread for sure there is no amount of fasting that will change that if you don't change it there are many lazy people we like a wolf free things look let me tell you there is a place for diligence if you must see the rain fall upon you this year are we getting blessed he become a poor that deals with a slack hand but the hand of the diligent does what there are some of you you are experts at begging day and night you beg everybody right please bros i beg you get 5k help me next time sister sorry i'm just knowing you don't be embarrassed i need 2k you you degrade yourself because of this devilish attitude of laziness there are grasses in people's houses to go and weed there are things to do but you get up and believe you're a big boy big boy with nothing in your pocket you calm down don't try to look successful pay the price and be successful hallelujah are you getting blessed you must reject laziness there are some students you see how some students live you think you think that they are professors right 10 or 11 exams is in one week and you see the person just strolling with his boxers go and fetch a, 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 a bucket of water lazily he cannot even wait at the tap he will turn somebody else's water drag himself to the bathroom come out 30 minutes later huh dirty boxers dirty singlets you can't wash it laziness all around you can't get up and sweep your room and some of our sisters are like that who do you want to marry tall dark and handsome he must be a millionaire you think god doesn't have sense he said do not be deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows there are many people see look let me tell you sometimes you may see me you see some of the things we are doing and you just don't be deceived by this this ever water if you want it come and carry it there is it there is more than this are you getting my point first thing tomorrow morning we are leaving for katsina it takes work it's not just anointing it takes diligence please you need to talk to yourself and say this year the spirit of laziness i curse you out of my life curse you out of an assignment you can do now you sit down and say i will do it on wednesday you get zero right another assignment you get zero they just they they solve a question in class they say just copy it and get 10 marks say i will do it later on look procrastination you must attack it this year hallelujah you are working in the office of your boss because you think you come for koinonia and the person you are working for is here it's no guarantee to be lazy i will fire you i employ you you are not doing what i employ in the name of jesus i will fire you and you will come back and you will hear me preach absolutely 
Absolutely. There is truly no food for a lazy man. Let me tell you the truth. You must get up and, and be serious about your destiny and work. There are some of us this year, you have no business with relationship. If you are passing and you see any beautiful lady, just say, blood of Jesus, and pass. Because this year is a year to you. Your own reign is coming to give you grace to stand up. No responsible parent will give her daughter to somebody who doesn't know where he's going. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Very important. But I believe that as we contend tonight in this miracle service, it's going to be a very fast walk. For me, I think this, this is it happening to you. If, if we close right now, I believe that you would have left with something. Many of us here belong to this category, this laziness category, right? Because social media, Facebook, Twitter, has and, and, and BBM has massaged our life of laziness. Something you can get up and do. You see a lot of people just to walk from one place to the other. You are taking a bike. Huh? Laziness. It's not like you are in a hurry for anything. You just load your phone and sit down in the afternoon. You are not walking. You are not doing anything. You are a liability to everybody around you. And you are just, you are, you are sending Yarrow boys as a student for instance. To go and buy you Mr. Biggs. Four, five thousand. They bring everything. You lie down with phone that you force out of your father or mother and you are making calls in the daytime. Even a worker is not doing that. You ping your life out and the person you are pinging is in the office making money. You are there struggling. The day you call him, he stops responding to you. Please don't be a liability to anybody this year. Whoever has been ignoring you is because you are becoming a pest. Rise up and begin to be hard working and you will become friends again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Especially for the brothers. Brothers, say amen. amen. Let me talk to you for one minute before we start praying. This year, please, please, something must change. There are some people, sir, five years, six years, no job. Not because they, they have never taken their CV anywhere. Say, but my uncle said it now. That uncle said it's wicked. You came to stay in your friend's house. When you stayed in his house, he was a student. He graduated, served, and is working. You are still staying in his house. He has gotten a job. You are still staying in his house. Whoever that friend is, drive that person out. After miracle service, tell him in the name of Jesus Christ, I appreciate you. Three years is enough time for you to sit down. Get Koinonia messages 2012, 13, 14. It will liberate you. Please, out of my house. Sometimes you need to push some people into their breakthrough. Over pampering destroys. Hallelujah. Over pampering destroys. There are times you need to get up and challenge yourself. They send you money in two weeks. You're already calling again. Laziness. You won't do anything. You hear that there is scholarship. Free. There are many graduates. Many graduates. You win is out. They won't apply. I think it finished today. They won't do anything. You said God told you you'll be an entrepreneur. Huh? and you are not doing anything you've never gotten up to go for any seminar to build yourself you see a seminar you reject it you are not watching anything on youtube you are not going to sit and learn under people you are just sitting down bragging around with nonsense that's what a lot of young people are doing around huh? god blesses you with fifty thousand that can start something that can bless you you use it and buy a suit to prove a point to the people who are busy building their destinies they are not even seeing the point you must change this year in the name of jesus christ fear and laziness we are going to pray three serious prayer points the moment we pray these three prayer points tonight we'll start with the sick people we'll start ministering to the sick people as soon as we pray the three prayer points please begin to write your prayer requests while we minister those outside can you shout hallelujah one more time shout hallelujah the Lord will visit you in a mighty way in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Success is not automatic. There are laws. There are laws. This is our year of the rain. 
God has spoken to us. Shown us the loopholes. Lift your hands and begin to thank God for this word tonight. He that he loves, he chastises. Bless his name. Bless his name. Lift your hands inside and outside. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for this word. It has come to clean me up. It has come to purify me. It has come to challenge me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Prayer point number one. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please say it like you believe it. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace. To align my mindset. To that of the word of God. Every thinking pattern. Every thought process. That is not of God. I challenge you. In the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father give me the mindset of victory. I'm tired of carrying ideologies. Some of us have ideologies about church. We have ideologies about praying in tongues. Ideologies about the Holy Spirit. Ideologies about prosperity. Ideologies about miracles. Ideologies about responsibility. About marriage that are antagonistic to the ways of God. The first miracle tonight is to pray. I submit my mentality. I submit my thought pattern. Please pray. Pray from your heart. I refuse to be limited. There is still a place for champions in life. There is still a place for the great. But you can never rise above your thought pattern. You can never rise above your ideology. You may have held on to it for years. It's time to probe your ideologies. It's time to probe your ideologies. It's time to re-examine your mindset. Let this mind be in me that was in Christ Jesus. The mindset of victory. I don't see defeat in my life. I don't see defeat with God. I am unlimited with God. I am unbeatable with God. I am a champion. Ay, 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 ay. Pray, rejoice not over me, my enemies. For though I fall, yet I will rise again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to challenge that spirit of laziness. Are you getting my point? Fear and laziness. Let's combine it together. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I challenge every spirit of fear. For God has not given me the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind therefore i declare that fear is banished from my life i refuse to fear and i challenge laziness from today i receive the grace to be diligent no more laziness it's time to take action Lift your voice and begin to pray. Time to take action. 2015. Time to take financial steps. 2015. 
time to take spiritual steps. 2015. Time to take intellectual steps. Go ahead and pray. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I cause the spirit of fear, fear of death, fear of past failure, every intimidation. Inside and outside, pray, pray. I cause the spirit of fear. I cause the spirit of fear. I'm a champion. I can make it. I can break barriers. I can break barriers. I am well able. I am not weak. I am strong in the strength of the Lord. And I cause laziness. I cause laziness. Laziness to study the word. Spiritual laziness. Mental laziness. Physical laziness. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. As we pray this prayer point, my goodness, I already sense the power of God mighty way that's right as we pray this very prayer point the healing power of god will begin to move hallelujah i'm going to request those who are sick those who came specifically for healing you will find your way as hold on let's pray first before you come i'd like you to come believing that you will part with that sickness forever hallelujah the last prayer point say in the name of jesus Oh God, reveal to me the strategy for possessing my blessing. Reveal to me the strategy in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I cry. What is the strategy? What is the strategy? Come on, pray, Koinonia. I cry unto the spirit of wisdom. Show me the strategy for my prosperity. Show me the strategy for my blessing. Show me the strategy for my lifting. Show me the strategy to get the attention of my destiny helpers. Show me the strategy for the church growth. Show me the strategy for the expansion of my business. Show me the strategy for five points show me strategy for first class show me the strategy to pass the jump show me the strategy hey, yeah, 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 hey, show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny pray show me the strategy Oh yes, the strategy is revealed in the place of prayer. In the place of prayer. Make sure you are praying tonight. Show me the strategy to open me up to the next level of destiny. Show me the strategy. I'm tired of making mistakes. I'm tired of moving in circles. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. I'm tired of marking time. It's time to break forth. Hallelujah. Begin to pray now and say, God, visit me. We're going to do, the Holy Ghost will do a very quick walk. Very quick walk. Hallelujah. Those who are sick, I'd like you to come up and line up here. Very quickly.
if you came here for the miracle service for healing please come and line up ushers help them coordinate them let's have it very quickly while that is happening make sure you write your request there is a mystery of answered prayer in this house make sure please if you have not written your prayer request start writing it i don't care what the situation is i like you to write it and let's drop it before god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy oh mighty god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy lord Take it, take it, take it, take it, of you in front i know you came here because of the testimonies you have had i want you to know that your situation will not be different are you hearing what i'm saying i want you to believe in the power of god there are certain conditions listen to me there are conditions in this place that are entirely demonic hallelujah it's going to be a fast one i don't know if we we'll have time to take testimonies or not but because there i i really i really really need to rush with time and let's do a lot please if we end late today i apologize in advance we'll do our best to kill time but please wait because god has something to do in your life hallelujah praise the lord father we give you praise it's called a miracle service we thank you for the anointing of the spirit in the name of jesus everybody make sure you participate now if there if you have loved ones who are sick you can connect you can tell them to connect praise the lord you don't need to come out for them but you can call them or do whatever and tell them look connect to what god is doing hallelujah we bless the name of the lord worship team help us praise the lord father we give you all the praise and we trust you to glorify the name of your son right now in jesus name go ahead please who brought this lady who brought this lady who came with her please if you brought somebody, let's know. Please, we are not faking it here. What's, what's wrong with her legs? Who brought her? My dear, look at me. What's wrong with your leg? Huh? You what? There's a wound in my leg. My leg is swollen. Your leg is swollen. I'm looking in the spirit and I'm seeing a charm. Look at me. What What did you say? You sat in what? I woke up. So you woke up and you saw your leg. leg. It's not a wound. This is a charm. In the name of Jesus, I break it. I curse it. Look at me. You've not been able to walk. I can walk. Okay, look at I me. I keep coming out. Look at me. Pause. It's coming out with pause. I curse it. Look at me. Just look at me. Keep your legs. Just look at me. Don't look at your legs. Look at me. Look at me. No, don't look at the legs. In the name of Jesus, walk. Come. come. Just come. Don't look at me. Look at me. Come. Walk. Come on. Give Jesus praise. Look at what is happening. <laughs> See, she's even surprised. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Can you climb up here? Climb by yourself. It's witchcraft. Don't be afraid. Help her if she needs any help. Okay, come. Move your legs. Just do what I'm doing. Move your legs. Move your legs. I curse that devil in the name of Jesus Christ. I break that power of witchcraft right now. I release that. Come on now, Koinonia. Give Jesus praise. God is healing people in this place. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that anyone that has orchestrated anything for you to fall into in the name of Jesus Christ, this night I command those powers to be broken in the name of Jesus. My dear, it never returns to you again. And this veil that I see over you in the spirit, I command that veil to go now 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Give God praise. Help us worship Him. Please, let's hold. You are the one who brought him. No, no, no. Talk, talk on his behalf. Let's save time, please. Okay. Our time. Say that I've been sick since 1980. 1998. 1998. Yes. Is he hearing what I'm saying? Yes, hearing. Okay. Again. Bless you, Daddy. Since 1998, what's yes. the sickness? Liver. Liver problem. Liver problem, sir. Sir, what what are the symptoms? What happens to him? Okay, sir. The belly was swelling. Okay. Mm. I'm going to pray for you okay. right now. Mm. When I pray for you, that swelling will go down now. Now. And you'll be able to walk. In the name of Jesus Christ. I curse that spirit. You are a spirit. Answer to the name of Jesus right now. I command the swollen stomach to go down right now. You see what is happening to you? In the name of Jesus. The heat sensation you're feeling is the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Heal right now. Sir, please come. Because the devil wants to use this and put stroke on you. Um, would you mind if, if I ask you to jump? Will you jump? Okay, just, just try it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Just lift it as high as you can. Look at me. Don't look at the legs. Go ahead, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, let's let's try. Just jump a little. Don't be afraid. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now walk, sir. Come. Just walk as fast as you can. As fast as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ. My God is awesome. You are healed completely in the name of Jesus Christ. As I stepped here, I saw this woman tied from head to toe. This is what I'm seeing. Head to toe. And I'm seeing blood all over you. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. What's wrong with her? Um, suddenly, she just grows lean like this. Mommy, There's look no at me. Headache. You will not die. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Just hold it. Look at me. Just look at me. Thank you, Jesus. Now I cost this power. Kalabata Kotobaya. Let mama go now. In the name of Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. I cost that spirit. Let her go now. I lose you. What couldn't she do? Like Parkinson's disease. Mama, in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk. Come. 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 Climb by yourself. Come. 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 Follow me. Just follow me, Mama. Look at this. Come on now, Koinonia. Give God praise. Can you lift your hands? See, she's laughing. Try to lift your hands, Mama. Can you lift your hands? Can you lift your hands? Is it Which of the hands can't she lift? Okay, go ahead. Lift, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Bring it down. Lift your hands. Come on, Koinonia. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. In the name of Jesus, look at me. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. I cause that spirit. Mama is released right now. Koinonia, give God praise. Let's celebrate what God is doing. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that power. Come, I need to pray for you too. Your mother, right? I pray for you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm seeing this thing. If I don't pray for you, it will affect you too. Right now, I curse. Lord, he's a worker in this house. Therefore, I curse that spirit. You are the sister. Lift your hands. If I don't pray for you, you have problem with marriage. You are young now, but we need to pray. This thing is the whole family thing. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ. I release you from this act of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. Salvation returns to this family. Go ahead and massage and let Hallelujah. Please, we are going to really, really be fast. As soon as we pray for you, just give room. Usher, start collecting the prayer request. If you have somebody's picture as I come, I may not be able to talk again. And so we'll just lay our hands. Believe God. Believe God that the situation will change in Jesus' name. My God is father careful although there is an iron in your leg in the name of jesus may there be a miracle i command this shorter leg to grow out now by the spirit of god madam look at me do you want to try walking uh -uh. i'm not asking you what you, you came here because you believe god can help you is that true you believe that Okay, as careful as you can, move your legs. You are, you are related to her? Come. Who are you? Your sister, madam? Alright. Don't cry. Don't cry. Please. Come, madam. Do you feel pain? You feel pain because of the iron. It's difficult now for us to... But after I pray for you, can you talk to the doctors to look at your legs and look at the iron? They'll be coming on Wednesday. Okay, fine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we agree. That as they come on Wednesday and check this leg, they will remove this iron and she will walk normally. Look at, look at this. Look at what the power of God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse that spirit. Let there be a miracle right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her have a seat. Please quickly, let's, let's save time. Worship team, help us. Let's not have... They will remove the iron, madam, and you will walk normally. In the name of Jesus Christ. I need to pray for you. Yes, I need to pray for you, madam. Because as I'm looking at you, I'm seeing pains. I'm seeing pains, um, like abdominal pains. And the Lord is asking me to minister to you. Can I pray for you? Hold my hands. Jesus, do a miracle right now. I cause that pain by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please just line them forward. Let them just come forward. Jesus. I don't need to ask you what the situation is. I really want you to believe that. Praise the Lord. 
I, I don't want you to think that maybe if I don't ask you, it means I don't give value to you. No. It's not even Such me doing the miracle. Awesome God. Right? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. Rise up, everybody. We're going to cause every wicked power. Please listen. Hallelujah. Look at me. I told us that one of the benefits and the blessings of prayer is the ability to cause limiting powers. It's called a miracle service. And this is January. Hallelujah. We believe in the full gospel and everything Jesus died to give. Listen. Every power that has tied anyone's destiny down, it's time for it to go. Are you listening to me? Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Go ahead and pray and say, Father, every spirit that is not of God looming around my life and my family, please make sure you are praying. That as the word of God comes now, there will be mighty, mighty deliverance. Lord, let there be deliverances. Break limitations over people's lives. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 The reason why the reason why we do deliverance is not is not working against the fact that Jesus says we are this and that and that it is on the strength of that the Bible says although he has put all things under his feet he said we do not yet know I hear a lot of people criticize the ministry of deliverance and all of that um, while I know that there are exaggerations here and there let me tell you something the people of God must be subjected to the full weight of all that God's power and anointing can do. are you following me now there are people who have struggled here. You love God, but doors will just not open. Let me tell you, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. And by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I'm going to minister to people right now. I see an angel of the Lord moving, and a lady is going to shout. I don't know why God does these things. Under the anointing. When that happens... It's a sign that the Spirit of God is ready to move and deliver people. Lift your hands. Hear me, brothers and sisters. It takes the power of God to subdue principalities. And there are some of you right now, both for you and your family, there are forces that will not let you go. But this night and right now, my goodness, there is the fire of the spirit at the count of three. It's not just a recitation. You're going to shout that name. The name that paid access for your liberty. Bring up, bring them out. My goodness. Deliverance is already happening inside and outside. There will be mighty angels. There is the sword of the spirit. Lord, let there be deliverance. Every family every destiny tied under any yoke of bondage i invoke it in the spirit that at the count of three those devils are under fire one two three come out now i command powers be gone now i cause principalities I cause spirits, I cause powers inside, outside. The angel of the Lord is moving. I command witchcraft. Bring them out. Spirits of ancestry. In the name of Jesus. The powers that have tied down man's destinies. The forces that have refused to let you go right now. I come with an apostolic anointing and in the name 
that is above all names. Let fire fall from heaven over your life, over your academics, over your marriage. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Lift your hands. We are still shouting one more time. Please bring them. Listen. For some of you, what will happen right now is not just for you alone, but for your family. Just keep them down there. Hallelujah. Malakata. And I see this affecting many ladies because I see marriage is being tied. Makoto Tobakata. Shekete Lekaya. As you shout that name, Jesus, you may not even know that that thing is in your family. But all of a sudden, physical fire physical fire will begin to burn right now on the count of three i challenge those powers one two three go 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 i cause that spirit delay delay i cause that spirit inside and outside i command that devil of delay to go now i command that power tying your destiny i command that power tying your breakthrough i command that power tying your family the price has been paid by the blood of jesus i break every legal access by the blood of Jesus, I break every legal access. By the blood of Jesus, I break every legal access. By the blood of Jesus, I release marriages. I release miracles. I command breakthrough. Makatete Teleba. Fire is burning. I command breakthrough. I set those altars on fire. I set those covens on fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Where are those who have been oppressed academically? Lord, where are they? There are people who would have moved forward. As I speak right now, fire is coming on people. Fire is coming. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. 2015, the year of the rain. Release the academics now. I command those powers. I challenge them. They must leave now. There is a family the Lord is showing me. You have been under stagnation for 10 years. 10 solid years. But as I prophesy right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command that family to be released now. I command that family to be released now. I command that family to be released now. Hallelujah. In the name that is above all names, I pray and I prophesy. The Lord is showing me men whose hands have been tied. And, and see, when your hands are tied, it means the capacity for favor and the capacity to move forward is not there. Lift your hands. Some of you will feel physical fire. Physical fire on your hands. There are chains burning. Lord, where are they? Let the sword of favor break them free from every oppression. Right now as I speak, anyone whose hands are tied in the spirit, 
I command those hands to be loose now. I command those hands to be loose now. The fire is falling, falling, falling inside and outside. Falling. I break the chain. My goodness, there are angels outside. The fire is falling. Chains of delay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In one minute, lift up the exact situation you want God to change. Begin to talk to him. Go ahead before prophecy comes. Please don't keep quiet. No matter how impossible it is, there is an anointing. Inside and outside, make sure you are talking to the Lord. This and that and that are my requests. Do a miracle. Some of you need a 24 hour miracle. Now all those here in front, in the name of Jesus, and by the fire of the Holy Spirit, at the count of three, not only will those devils leave, they must release your family members. I speak to every spirit. You know my voice. I represent the embassy of heaven. And in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, you will leave now. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Go, go. Go, go. Never to return. Never to return. Never to return. Never to return. Go. Go. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this request. Your requests are there. Please, in case you've not dropped yours, locate it quickly to the ushers. It's not a ritual. There is a mystery of answered prayer. Hallelujah. The Bible says how that Ezekiah took the request before God. The threats may be joblessness. It may be impossible situations. As I kneel upon this request and we pray together, just for one or two minutes, see, I assure you, I assure you, you will return with a testimony. Except you refuse to come and testify. Stretch your hands and begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Remember last week we thought that words activate spiritual laws. Hallelujah. 
I want you to receive. For some of you, there will be an instant performance in the name of Jesus. I want to start by praying for families. Every family that has been in a state of stagnation, please lift your hands inside and outside. I'm prophesying now. Every family represented in this place in the name of Jesus Christ in this year of the rain, I command that between now and next month's miracle service, let there be dramatic breakthroughs. Let there be dramatic breakthroughs. Let there be dramatic breakthroughs. By the agency of the Spirit, we activate every law that needs to be in motion in the name of Jesus. The laws of favor, the laws of destiny help us in the name of Jesus. I pray anyone here who has been under any academic bondage from secondary school to master's PhD right now in this year of the rain, I command speed for you. I declare move forward now. Move forward now. Make progress now. Move forward now. In the name of Jesus. I pray for anything that has died in your hands. Business. The works of your hands. Relationships. In the name that is above all names. Let resurrection happen in your life now. Please believe what I'm saying. Believe what I'm saying. God is changing people's situations. This is how God changes situations. By the power of his prophetic word. I say it again. Whatever has died. I speak to that which was dead. Come back to life now. I command every blood condition whoever is standing here and you are SS right now we change that genotype to AA in the name of Jesus Christ I cause hepatitis be crushed to the root in the name of Jesus we cause HIV you leave God's people in the name of Jesus. Everyone here who has been oppressed by spirits, you sleep in the night and they oppress you. In the name of Jesus, let the fire of the Holy Ghost bring deliverance to you now. Ay, ay, ay. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit bring deliverance to you now. There are people here. It works for others until it gets to your turn. Then it fails. Right now in the name of Jesus. I command that the last time that tragedy happened in your life. The power of God is moving on this word. Moving strong on this word. The last time it happened. The mystery behind that tragedy, I cause it in the name of Jesus. I declare that in this January, between now and next month's miracle service, what you could not do in the whole of 2014, may my God empower your hand to do it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every dying CGPA here. Hear the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I command it to come alive. There are people here. Students. Your true status is first class. But something has tied you down. Your true status is four points. But something has tied. Whatever that something is. I lift it off your life now. 
in this year 2015 go back to your departments and break barriers in the name of jesus i pray for every business here whatever has stopped it from working in the name of jesus we command it to come alive now whoever needs to come into your life between now and next miracle service and open a door for you i call them forth now i call them forth now i declare whoever is jobless and looking for a job here or your family members in the name that is above all names where they said there are no jobs we create jobs now believe it believe it we create jobs now in the name of jesus christ whoever has been assigned by my father to favor you and has refused to respond to you in the name of jesus may the lord compel them to respond in the name of jesus i pray for your spiritual life whatever has robbed you of an effective prayer life every worry everything that has robbed you i command fresh impartation of prayer grace receive it now fresh impartation of prayer fire whatever makes you study the bible and you don't understand may the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now and i pray for you every habit in your life masturbation pornography and any other thing that is not of god that has robbed you of your christian integrity you love god but you find things pushing you that embarrass you right now i agree with you be delivered now i agree with you be delivered now hallelujah whoever is being eyed for death in this place that the devil has vowed that you will not see february miracle service i'm praying by the mystery of the blood i open that door of gate of of death and i command in the name of jesus that your soul is ransomed from the gates of death in the forthcoming election you are preserved in the name of jesus whoever comes to destroy you will die before he gets to you in the name of jesus as you travel on the road you are preserved you cannot be a victim of accident in the name of jesus i establish the covenant of peace upon your life you are protected by the angels of heaven i declare right now that in 2015 living from hand to mouth that spirit of begging living from hand to mouth by the mystery of divine supply i bail you out of that wicked situation in the name of jesus i pray for you whatever you wrote here as a request right now i agree with you that it is turned into a testimony i say it one more time whatever you wrote here as a request i agree with you we turn it into a testimony by the power that turned the rod of moses into a serpent and back into a rod i turn what was here as a as a prayer request by the power of the holy ghost let it become a testimony in your hands in the name of jesus every factor that must be in place for you to stand here and testify i release it in the name of jesus i pray we pray for our lecturers every lecturer that has been victimized and any lecturer that the devil is eyeing to bury this year in the name of jesus by the mystery of the blood they are preserved 
I'm speaking any position that belongs to any God fearing lecturer that is being truncated by powers of darkness we stand as the parliament of heaven in this city and we enforce compliance in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you if there is one thing that should happen in your life let it be indescribable favor 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 i prophesy it from the depths of my heart if you have never seen favor happen in your life you will see favor that will make you cry financial favor marital favor academic favor spiritual favor receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah lift your hands and bless the lord thank you jesus hallelujah now you're here you've never given your heart to the lord jesus you've never made him lord of your life we're out of time please keep standing everybody let's honor these people you are here and you have never given your life to christ remember we said the basis for your victory is what jesus christ has done wherever you are or you have once given your life to christ but for some reason you found your life going haywire and you need to make your ways right don't say time is gone Please, wherever you are inside or outside you might be a new student you've been a Christian all your life or you may be new in this town I pray right now that you respond to the call of God wherever you are you are returning to Jesus or you are making decisions for the first time please make your way to the front be bold about it be bold about it I know God is talking to somebody don't wait for anybody to come you are the first person find your way to the front God bless you God bless you please make sure you celebrate them as they come celebrate them God bless you those outside no matter how far you are make your way to the front Jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men I will be ashamed of you before my father if you deny me before men young and old make your way you are not too far don't let the devil say you are far make your way run to the front run to the front forget about your neighbor or who you came with it's a personal affair tonight hallelujah thank you so much for coming lift your hands as i leave you to pray say after me jesus i believe in you i believe you died for me tonight i repent of my sins i obtain forgiveness and cleansing wash me with the blood of jesus I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that I'm a changed person the power of sin is broken over my life and I'll never be the same in the name of Jesus now keep your hands lifted father thank you you brought these ones to your throne may their decisions be genuine preserve them by the power of the Holy Spirit they will never be the same I break the power of sin over your life you have eternal life into your spirit and I declare that you're of the family of faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now I'd like you to follow the ushers, follow the gentlemen waving their hands. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.